Right, I think we are live, right. Is that all working? Let's have a look. Let's have a look, see here. Aha, perfect, okay. Uh, let's see, is that working? Hmm, that doesn't seem right. Hang on, where are we? Is that better? Okay, I think that's... Let's try that. That's weird. I don't know why I put it on that. Selling. Hello, everyone. You all there? Hello. I can see uh, nine guys watching already. How are you today? I think the chat was a little bugged, so just refresh the stream and come back in, then it should work. Good afternoon, Rainbow Boy. How are you doing? How are we all doing today? Good, good. Good to see everyone's doing all right. Hello. Hello, hello. It's been quite a while since I've done a stream. I mean, it's been... It must have been a good year since I've done a stream, actually. So this is uh, good, good to be back, actually. But yeah, today we're going to be doing episode 200, as I announced last week with subscriber systems. What I'm doing is while we're while we're just setting up and getting started, I'll actually get the first simulation all ready and set up, actually. So that's probably a good way to start. So we're going to try and get through as many simulations as possible in the queue today. Because, yeah, we need to do some catching up because we have got a lot of systems to catch up on. So we're going to just see how many we can do in about two hours, roughly. So... Yeah, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and uh, do this. So, right, we've got one simulation here. I mean, this is on the workshop, so I'm just going to hop straight in and get that all set up for us before we begin here. So, I need to go to the workshop, get this all done. Okay, browse, paste that in there. Let's see. Okay, so we need this system here. So, this is from Comrade Moth here. Okay, so let's close that. Okay, let that get installed while we're all going up. Okay, oh, wow, I see the chat's gone very busy since I last looked. Right, how are we doing? Do I like pizza? Yes, pizza's very nice. <laughs> pizza's good. Hello, Siren. How you doing? See you in the chat as well. Yeah, we've got a lot of, uh, a lot of the guys here. Very, very nice. Yeah, how's everyone doing today? Cool, cool. Right, anyways, I think without further ado, we're going to start actually hopping into this as well. So we might as well get this party rolling with how many systems we got. So, right, first system here. So this is from the user, let's see, uh, Schooler Moth. Okay, let's see what we have got here. Okay, we've got a lot of reading. Okay, so apologies. I probably won't be able to read the chat much while I'm reading all of this because we've got a lot of description here. So it's going to be a bit weird going back and forth. But we've got a lot of reading for this system. So without further ado, we're just going to get straight into this. So, not the North Star, a custom star. So Polaris 5.2. This system has a lot of lore, but unfortunately I wrote too much for this sim. So I had to cut a bit, which burnt my soul. Light one in the descriptions. Don't include all of the bodies and jump around a little. Go at your own pace. Okay. So here is the basic rundown. So Irvus and Willow are formed from the same proto cloud. So that's both of these guys at the start here. Okay, so let's just have a little peek at these guys. So they're formed from the same proto cloud, but due to instability of the early system, they were separated. Their orbits tell the tale of their shared origins. Okay, cool. So this is the first of the planets. It looks to be quite a heavy atmosphere, a bit maybe like Venus sort of atmosphere going on there, quite thick. So we've got that one there, says Irvus. Over here we have Willow. So if we add all the way down here, so another basic sort of rocky world um, as well there. Right, let's see uh, what we have next. Okay, next up we've got uh, Twim over here, okay. So I don't think this one's mentioned in the list here, but yeah, there we go. So we've got that one. We've also got a moon here as well. So there's both of those guys. Okay, so zooming out. Uh, next up, we have got, okay, so Samet and Pylos, like Earth and our moon, are formed from the same materials, however, the story for that is a bit complicated and will be explained in a moment. Uh, Samet itself is home to Sametrians, uh, a race similar to humans in both their strengths and flaws. They're just setting out to explore the system in detail, which would be just postmodern days in terms of discovery. Okay, so this is the planet with life on it here. So what do we think of this planet? Let's have a look. Got to say, quite a cool looking planet. What do we think about that in the chat? Uh, let's just have a quick read. Uh, do you have any pets by any chance? I used to, not anymore, unfortunately. How to upgrade to the latest version of Universe Sandbox? Um, all you need to do is just go into the Steam. So it would be... I can... So all you do is right-click the game on Steam, go to Properties. 
uh, go to uh, betas and opt out of all beta programs, then the game should automatically install to the latest version that is released. So, uh, yeah, keep that in mind. Okay, right, anyways, continuing on with this uh, system. So, uh, let's see here. Okay, cool. And then this actually has a moon called Pylos as well over there. Okay, cool. Right, next up. Okay, so this is Fawn over here. So this one isn't mentioned either in the uh, description. Okay, so we can see just another sort of default rocky planet. Got a nice moon called Drum as well. Cool. Right, next up we have got this planet here. Now this one has some uh, descriptions. So once they set their probes to Istius, and I'm probably going to butcher a lot of pronunciation, guys, so be prepared for a long ride with that. Uh, however, they found geological data almost identical to both the world and their moon. A history unlike they have predicted begun to take form. Now strongly supported, it is believed that Samite, Pylos, and... Yeah, I can't even say the names of these are... Uh, Istus have originally formed together as two major dense areas within the protoplanet disk, known as the Osteus Prime. Yeah, I'm going to butcher everything here. Uh, the moon also orbited two at the time, but wasn't made of the same materials. Okay, so that's uh, this object here. So we've got gum and this one here. Oh, man, they're not going on easy on me on how to say these things. <laughs> oh, man, that's pretty crazy. It is a nice looking planet. Yeah, definitely. Right. Um... So that was for the blue one we were just at. Right, next up we have got... So we got Reckon over here. Okay, interesting. Oh, and they've also... Okay, so Fawn and Drum, like some of the objects in this system, appear to add nothing. However, let's not forget that the Samaritans, these objects have been visible for thousands of years. Fawn and Drum were sort of Galilean moons from our history, um, which their history proved that gravity existed. Okay, this along with the discovery of the Molian moon shattered the geocentric model and brought a sudden... Okay, that's pretty cool. Fawn and Jungle Cross supposed to be the two of the most uneventful histories, but I doubt they care much. Call it a good fate, I guess. Okay. Right, where are we heading next? Uh, so next up, we've got Molia over here. So this is a gas giant. Okay. Here we are. Got a nice set of rings to boot with it as well. Looking good. Right, very, very nice indeed. So there's that. Got a nice, obviously, big set of rings. Also got two little moons. Let's have a quick peek at those in the top there. This one's got a nice uh, purpley atmosphere going on it as well, actually. Nice. Okay. Okay, Elanity's atmosphere. Where's where's that one? Would, would we just go to that one? Uh, where is... Because I think he did say that some of the stuff is in a bit of a weird order. Where is... Okay, so that's it there. Okay. Oh, okay. So Elanity's atmosphere... I, I was looking at the planet or the moon the whole time. Is puzzling. So should nitrogen, oxygen, perhaps propane? No attempts have made to enter the atmosphere for oblivion. They don't want to risk setting the atmosphere on fire. <laughs> so that's what it looks like underneath. So pretty thick atmosphere to go with that. Okay. Right, so Moller itself here, Molia, is a, assumed to be a helium giant. This is quite unusual, but models suggest upper layers of hydrogen may have stripped from multiple passes. Okay. Uh, reactive other events will reduce sensitive gases that are blown away somehow. These theories still aren't enough to explain the wild ratio of H to HE, though as a normally for sure. So hydrogen to helium. Right. Okay. Moving on. So we've got even more reading here. So we've got a lot of stuff. Right. So uh, the Kalin, Kalian system. So that's... Uh, okay. And then we've also got Tazwin over here. So what's this? Uh, over here. Oh, this one has an interesting little... Uh, Crater on it. Oh, God, this one's been bashed to shreds. Look at the holes in it. So you can see there's a lot of. Yeah, this one's been bashed to shreds then. Okay. So is there any mention of Tazwen in here? I don't know if there is really. Uh, so it's also got a few moons to go over it. Anyways, moving on. So the Kalian system holds a story in its past. So is that Kalas hero by any chance? I'm guessing it's something to do with this green one. So what have we got down here? Okay. So, oh, yeah, it's got a quite a nice. Oh, it's a cool green colour as well. Look at that. Okay. So I'm assuming the Kalas means Kalian system holds still in its past. Many actually written in orbits of details of the objects. Orn has primitive marine life, so that's this object here. Kind of reminds me of Jupiter's moon Europa in a way, actually. Beneath the frozen waste its surface, the fate of life is unsure, but their beings here outlive many planets after the death of our star. Dopper and Dingbat obviously formed from identical materials. But the question is, are they native to the system? Okay, how can a moon have its own moon is confusing to most of us. Yeah, it is pretty, pretty crazy. So... Is that over here? Is there two here? So where's the moon with the moon? Just trying to work out where we're at. So what's the name of it? It was... Um, Oin has primitive... Uh, the, the Dropper and Dingva. Where are those? Ah, oh, okay. Over here. Right. Cool. 
So, formed from identical materials, so they're very, very dark coloured, so yeah, they look, they do match, okay. Um, okay, it's, uh, Paz is and Echo tell a story of chaos and violence, both having elongated orbits, so they're both of, uh, these guys over here. Okay, we're kind of going back and forth between a lot of these, okay, interesting. Um, both having elongated orbits tra travelling out into interplanetary space as if something was ejected, but what could that have been? The answer is Taswen, apparently boosting a massive Ganashian rays. So is this... Oh, so there's Taswen over there. Okay, so we've already been to this one. So that's the one with the bashed up... Okay, that makes sense then. So, Taswen is a great fit for the ejected moon of Kalas. The orbits of the moons along with the impact locations and gig moons are the official nickname for the astral moons around Taswen. All tell the same story, a violent one. What exactly happened will remain unknown for a long time. Okay, well, it's quite a lot to keep up with going back and forth between a lot of the objects. Anyways, how's we doing on the chat here? Okay, um... Gas giants... I'm just trying to keep up with everyone because I can't really... Go reading between all this and then back to the chat then. I'm just trying to work out. Just trying to make sure I haven't missed anything uh, too much. But okay, cool. How many systems will you be doing? Honestly, as many as we can get done in about one and a half, two hours, really. We're just going to see where we go. See how we do. So, okay, cool. Right, anyways, um, moving on. So, okay. The fate of Sherb and Kilk is like a hidden one. Too dark to see from... Sam so, is that Sherb over here? So, this is a... Very, very ejected orbit. So it got a moon as well. Okay, so there's the kilk. Okay, so there are two, two objects there. They're in complete darkness as well. They don't mind know their planets. Okay, so the the gen sim tells the rest of the story. The Samaritans and the locals have a bit of history. P.S. Try pronouncing the names. It's pretty fun. Saying the names wrong won't me won't make me as bad as the Uranus joke does. Yeah, I, I think I probably just butchered about every spelling you could probably put in here apart from Polaris the star. I think that's I've probably butchered absolutely everything there. But that's typical me, isn't it? So, <laughs> so there we are. But there we go. So that does it for the Polaris system there. So that's the first simulation done. So, okay, we're off to a pretty good start there. Looking good. So, uh, we're about 12 minutes in. That's one system down already. So. Okay, so that was some schooler moth in the Discord. So that's uh, just that. Uh, okay, so that one's done. Oh, we have another. Okay, so they've posted the second simulation as well. And finally, here's the Gen Sim. Oh, okay, so this is like a binary system with the system we've just viewed then. Okay, interesting. So let's go ahead and get that also ready to go as well. So this is like a, a sequel to the first simulation we've just viewed here. So Gen 4.1 is the simulation name here. So it's made by the same guy. Let's go ahead and uh, get this all set up. Uh, how's the chat doing as well? But yeah, the goal the goal would be to try and get as many simulations done in the um, in the thing. Yeah, um, where are we? I want to go to the Universe Sandbox page, please. Uh, where are we? No, I don't need my stuff. Let me go. Hang on. I want to go. I want to browse the workshop. I want to go through what I've saved. Where are we? No, I don't want this. I want to workshop item. No, get gate filter by. I just want Universe Sandbox. Come on. How do I get back to the browser workshop? There we go. And then universe... Oh, I don't normally have to do this. Uh, sandbox. Okay, there we go. Let me get back to the sandbox page. There we go. That's what we want. We need to paste in there. There we go. That's what we want. Perfect. Okay, cool. Right. So let's wait for it to download. Let's get in there. Cool. Cool. Where do I send simulations for this series? All you need to do is join my Discord server, upload it in the US2 simulations chat, and I'll hopefully get to it today, but I don't know. There is a lot. There's a good 10, 20 systems that we need catching up on. So, anyways, here we are. We're loading this up. But just looking at where... So, the simulation I'm doing now, this was posted at the 1st of December 2021. So, you can see I'm about four months, five months behind the actual date in simulation. So, yeah, waiting time... Normally it'd be a few months, but obviously if I'm going through and catching up on a lot today, hopefully that will shorten it a bit. But anyways, moving on, let's see what we have got. So this is the sequel, right? Hi, I trust you came here from the polar system. Well, welcome to the Gainar system. The system that comes first since the two are binary, you can do whatever you want. So yeah, this is the binary system of the system we just viewed, I believe. So cool. Okay, anyways, on to the star itself. So Jen here. It's a K-type star, born a bit before Polaris. Ah, there you go. So it's linking in with the other system. I like that. That's cool. And it's kind of good we're doing these all together in one video, actually. So, very, very good indeed. Right. 
So it's a K-type star born a bit be before Polaris. It will be soon be proven that Polaris and Gen did not form from the same protocloud, but instead formed extremely close together. The strange gravitational interactions dust cloud take part in a simply capture the two discs to uh, each other very on. Okay, right. So what is this here? There's a really bizarre trail. What's that? What's causing that trail? That's a really weird trail. What is that? Anyone know what that white trail is? Going up to the star, because it looks like there's an object that doesn't exist here, because I'm trying to select it in my cursor. It's nothing... I can't even select it. That's very strange. And it vanishes when I go on trail mode. How bizarre is that? Okay. Anyways. Um, although looking like a stupid gash on at first glance, if you stop and look at it for a second, you may wonder why Nalia is purple and blue clouds. So where is... Oh, so that's here. Okay, so there's two other objects first that we need to check out. So here we've got Spudzer and Damek over here. So that one's got a uh, bit of an atmosphere. But anyways, onto the purple. So this is... Oh, I like the look of this one. Um, it's a good-looking world, actually. Got a planet very close. An Earth-like moon, actually, very close to it here. Okay, so although looking like a, a standard gas giant at first glance, you may look in why it has purple and blue clouds so close to its star. These are thought to be particularly explained by the vast amount of water within the giant. Like Molia from the other system, it's a strange planet with a somewhat unexplainable composition. Although it appears to be the main concentration of water in the entire uh, system, this may be because when the star ignited cell effusion, ice particles weren't pushed back as far as previously thought. Okay. Okay, Texit is the home of the Texit folk. Unlike the Samaritians, the Texit folk are like us. They are no natural predators or competition that instead navigated poisonous plants and prey. Though communal actions and evolution focus on keeping each other alive, they grew compassionate for the whole species and their natural environment. They spend their days exploring space, cooperating with the Samaritans through radio and physical colonies on both sides, and roasting marshmallows by the main bonfires, the dominant light source. Okay. Interesting. So there it is. That's a nice uh, Haspel moon there. Let's check its stats, actually. We'll have to have a look at the stats. 93 and 71 there. Nice. That's cool. Right. Um, that's looking... That planet looks like purple Jupiter. That's going on a... In a way. Yeah. Okay. It's got... It's composition, though. It's got a lot of water in it. So you can see it's more of an ice... More like a warm Neptune, actually. I mean, it's minus 26 degrees. But that's a whole lot warmer than Neptune is. So, yeah, I guess you could say it's like a warm Neptune. Hot Neptune, whatever you want to call it. Uh, next up, we got uh, Cillian over here. Okay. So, uh, some 1.2 billion years ago, it is projected that a mysterious object known as the Crackle Bod called a comet of some sort or, or the object in space on detects it forming the sea. The comet seemed to contain shameless materials only explained to be alien nature. Whether or not this comet was a moon or not is unknown. Okay. Do not be fooled by the dust the, or the dull surface of Cillian. The moon hides vast amounts of flora and aerial fauna in plain sight although initially thought to be a dead world the shocking and dire Protoss community with landers revealing thick vegetation the forests are likely they're just grey oh, so it's got uh, greyish plants on it interesting so it may look dull but all those greyer darker areas they're actually all forests nice cool so there's that one so another moon with decent probably decent stats as well 87 and 61 nice so there's both of those guys cool so the life on uh, Sullion arrived via Pass Pamir during the... Oh god, I cannot say these. The comet from... Okay, so it formed from the comet. The mysterious comet that arrived. This tells us a lot about the early life on uh, Texit. Mainly that it used to be grey. This is possible due to the star being dimmer in the past. As it grew older and slightly more yellow, grey vegetation absorbed all the wavelengths of a dimmer star and life adapted to the brightening starlight. Possibly because of the shorter days on... Uh, Salian planet life stayed great to absorb all the light it could. Once again, however, this explanation isn't quite enough for such a strange phenomenon. Okay, whoa, it's a lot of reading. I'm gonna have no voice by the end of this. <laughs> Grey plants don't exist. Well, it's a bit of fantasy, remember, in uh, these sandbox simulations, but the, the possibility is if you're around a less dim star, so a more dim star than the sun, there's less photosynthesis. So, in theory, the plants, it's like in Space Engine, in theory, the plants, all of the plants and stuff on stuff in Space Engine, for instance, they're not green, are they? They're around red dwarfs, they're normally a reddish colour. It's all due to the photosynthesis, very sciencey stuff. I mean, I'd definitely recommend looking it up um, with all of that, honestly. Grey plants don't exist. Mercury is grey. Well, Mercury doesn't have plants on it, remember. So, okay, interesting. Right, anyways, moving on. So, where are we heading next? So, uh, da -da -da -da. okay, so Pish, Posh, and Wizwatch, these are some really wacky names, are all of identical origin. So, 
So there's Pish there. We've got Wish Watch. And I can't find Posh. Maybe that's that weird object. It's like glitched there, that trail one. I, I can't find the Posh one, but maybe it is there somewhere. Anyways, on to so here's Pish. So that's got a uh, Earth like sort of atmosphere going on there. It's also got well, Wish Wash here. That's more of a darkened out world. Okay. Uh, like many systems, these three bodies show identical geological data. Moreover, Pish and Posh look identical. Are they a binary, maybe? Are they really close together? Oh, they're... Okay, cool. Oh, they are blimmin'. They are really, really close to each other. Surely, Roosh Limit would tear them to shreds. But they do look very similar. Okay. Now, exact same atmosphere compositions. It explained that Wishwash was ejected from the pair extremely early on as it incredibly dwarfed. The orbits support this model. Okay, so they must have started off as a free and one of them broke away. Okay. A petition to cha change the name Wishwash to Peace Rock in light of first contact the Samaritans was proposed, but was ultimately failed. The petition will once uh, more once the object Jacob 4 and 6 is discovered a few decades very soon. Okay. Oh god, okay, look at the next one's name. So Flux a uh, dunk. Flux a dunk. Say that ten times fast. Flux a dunk, flux a dunk. Uh, yeah. Flux a dunk, flux a dunk. Okay. Um, it's quite possibly the one true gas giant of the entire system. Not extremely unusual, but in a large size, it deserves a title. So this is our dominant gas giant. 1.53 Jupiters in mass, large and Jupiter in radius as well. So this is our big dominant object um, of this simulation. Okay. Right, next up we have got Ruckle over here. That one is completely uh, blacked out. Okay. Um, then we've got Viola over here. So that's uh, another moon. We've got Butterball. Is similar to Io. While not as volcanic, it sports a bright yellow colour that is seen from early astronomers on text. It made the omelette look more buttery than white in an IP, so it's dubbed Butterball. Very professional. Okay, cool. So there's all of those guys. It's also got another moon out here as well. Okay, right, what have we got next? We've got Tatterbug as well. <laughs> right, next up we've got Munus over here. I keep on wanting to say Mimus, to be honest. Right, so. The binary is bright enough to be seen from... Oh, so it's a, oh, it's a binary. Okay. Oh, nice. There is a proper binary. Cool. Um, it's discovered just 24 years before first contact with the Samaritans. It is a simple binary which intriguingly kept two objects in arguable diverse materials. This isn't too extreme, though. It's just unexpected. Pretending that Jacob 4 and 6 isn't really in orbit for a second. It's a flyby object similar to... Or, oh, okay. So it's like that one that flew in for our uh, system. A trans uh, Puxidian object that was... Uh, to be named by the discoverer. Unlike Hal's, however, the discovery decided to present the honour to the children of Sam. Okay, schools around the world took an initial vote. The name was chosen Peace Rock, knowing, okay, so we meant, we saw that earlier about Peace Rock. Um, this didn't happen yet and will instead happen once the comet shows the first time's a tale, but it's pretty sure of them. Okay, now for the strange one. I should have said stranger. The Cradle Bot. Okay, so that's that weird one that they mentioned earlier. Right. So. Oh, oh, okay, there it is. Okay, interesting. And there's that Jacob object as well. So that's that one that's flying through the system like that one in our solar system did. So it's a flyby interstellar traveller here. So that's an obviously permanent darkness. But anyways, moving on. So the strange one, the Crackle Bod. It's a distant object not native to the Hodor system, captured by, again, like Jacob 4 and 6. Its gravity is incredibly harsh, as cold as it looks. Okay. So this is the mysterious world. But it wasn't always this way. See, the Podio's canon takes place in a year 14.9 billion. A few million years more alien civilizations have been discovered. They plan to throw the 15 billion excavenza in a universe. This old objects are ejecting their stars. Okay, the stars all the time. This world used to be a temperate, arid world. Majority surfaced in flat, dry plains. It was named Stool, and it had the Stoolians. Once their star began to die, Stool was ejected. The Stoolians tried to find out how to survive the journey through space, but they didn't make it past the 874,000th year in deep space. The Stoolians were friendly. They were good. They let the Samaritans and the Tech folk be good as too. And what a wonderful note concludes the purge. Did you try pronouncing names? Yes, I did, and I got completely shattered by trying to say all these. Um, thank you so much for checking out. Um, have a good one million years. <laughs> so there, there's the last uh, object in this system. So that beat, that does it for this uh, two uh, two sets of systems. So they're relating together. So that's pretty cool. So that is the Gen system done. So yeah, two um, two um, objects combined together there. So two sets. Right. Um, so there's both of those gone. Right, so moving on to the next system now. We got uh, from the user Greenish Green. I remember them. We've done one from them before. This is called the 
binary bright system. Interesting, okay. Let's see what we've got here, and also have a quick read of the chat as well. I'm um, apologies, I cannot keep up with it when I'm reading all of this stuff. So, well, that was loud outside. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and search this up. Oh, it just changed page again. Oi, don't do that. Can I go back? Oh, I can go back. Okay, that's better. Right. Let's, okay, so let's get that downloaded. Uh, yes, yeah, subscribe, please. Thank you. Okay, so that will download down there. Anyways, what's the chat saying? Hello, Neptunian guy. Hello. Um... This is my first time on your stream. Yeah, how you doing? How are you, Neptunian guy? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Uh, everyone's having a laugh about Butterball by the looks of it. Stop it with the Butterball. <laughs> Quite a weird name, I have to say. But <laughs> there it is. So, Butterball. <laughs> right, next up. So, we've got Binary Bright System here. So this, like I said, it's from the user Greenish Green in Discord. So, let's see what we have got here. Right. If it would load, come on. Oh, right. Okay. So not as much reading in here, but here it is. It looks like there's a lot of rings. The game is lagging a bit. So there we go. Apologies for the lag in advance. Right. So Pavicon. Welcome to the... So it's binary bright system. Crediting to all the amazing people for some of the objects. Okay. Right. So where do we begin? So Pavicon itself, created after Betelgeuse's death. It shines brighter in the sky than Sirius. Okay. So, Betbritus, the toxic gas on the planet. So, where, where's that planet? Oh, there it is. Okay, great. So, the toxic gas on the planet makes the colour sort of amusing. It also has beautiful rings um, and some moons orbiting. Okay, so there it is there. So, that's the first of the planets. We've also got some moons. So, I have a quick, uh, quick highlight of all of these. So, there they all are there. Okay. So, that's all of those guys. Cool. So, I think that's most of them. And then this one as well. So Hemiosaur, okay. Next up we got, oh and there's also another moon here, never mind. So it's a nice blue, a lot of people pick that little blue colour for their small little asteroids, don't they? We've seen a lot of those. Okay. So next up we got Himoden. So where's that? So that's this object here. Ooh, this one's pretty exotic coloured, right. Whoa, it's got a lot of rings. Lots and lots of rings, that's where also the lag in this system is coming from. Wow, we. That is a lot of stuff there. That's uh, pretty crazy, okay. Quickly do that as well. Uh, hang on, just bear with me, guys. Okay, right, anyways, moving on. So, we're him are done here. Uh, the bands on the giant look beautiful. With the rings and moons, it surely blends in with the system. It is a good-looking world. I do like it. The green is... I don't think the green stands out too much, I have to say. It mixes nice, quite nice with the blue as well. But obviously, a big set of rings to go with it there. Uh, rings and moons, it surely blends in with the system. Yeah, it's pretty insane. I mean, if we turn off all the orbits and labels, you can see it. that ring system, you can see it from quite a while away. So, pretty cool. Anyways, back on to the uh, thing here. So, we got um, both of these. So, we've got, yeah, just a few moons, a few random little asteroids. I mean, I don't think any of these are really significant size moons. They're just uh, minor asteroids. Uh, there they all are there. It looks like we've got a large moon possibly on the outskirts here. I did see like a reddish colour one. One month, one year. It orbits for a whole month and orbits the star for one year before exploding. Whoa. Oh, this one's pretty, really exotic colour. Okay. So Minnesota, possible candidate for life. So what's next? Uh, where's that? Um, so that's this blue one here. We have skipped a few objects as well. But anyways, Minnesota over here. Possible candidate for life. So there it is there. Okay, cool. Right. Anyways, moving on. So, not much oceans on it, or not much water at all, actually, but got a little bit going on that could probably help it out. So, we've also got both of these as well. Two other moons. Okay, cool. So, next up, we've got Flora. It has the biggest moon and rings in the whole system. Wait, there's a there's a planet with even bigger rings? No wonder it's a pretty laggy system. Oh. Oh, no, they're nowhere near as big as the one we were just at, but there it is. So, it's a blue, uh, blue planet. Cool. So, the, oh, the biggest moon, not the biggest rings. Okay, so where is the biggest moon? Let's see if we can try and find it. Is it this one? I mean, there's a lot of moons. We'll quickly just try and select through them all, though. So there they all are there. Tustus, okay. I mean, there's loads of moons here. I mean, you can see. That's a pretty weird design. Well, look at that. What's going on there? That's a very strange. See, look at that. What is that all about? Huh. Right, so you got all of that. 
Okay. Pretty cool stuff there. All right. But I can't seem to find the largest moon, though. There's a lot of... Uh... Maybe it was the one we looked at then. I mean, this one here seems to be the only one with significant... Well, it has a name, so... Maybe unless it's this one further out. No, that's also small. And there's also this one as well. Some of them are not even named, so obviously less significant ones. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, Inati. It has an alright purple shade to it, but the moon is system is just chaotic. So, this is it over here. Oh, okay. So, it's a very, very pink shade. Interesting. It's tilted on its side like Uranus. It's moon system. Okay. So they're all just small, obviously, little ones. And then also uh, a larger one here. Got a bit of oceans going on this one, actually, as well. Okay. Uh, next up, we got a uh, we... <laughs> right, Okay, so over here. The gas giant rings were formed by nearby supernova ashes. Okay, that's got a really interesting set of rings. No moons, but a lot of rings. Really, obviously, a pale, all-white gas giant there. So next up we got uh, Castion, a twin of Pav... So this is this, this second... Ah, okay, so it's the second star. But before we head over there, there was just a few planets on the inner system. We didn't... They weren't mentioned. So... What were the... So there was all these objects here. What were all these? There was just a few... And there was this like, blue one here as well. I don't think we visited this one. Oh, no, we didn't. No, we definitely visited that one. But yeah, there was just a few in here that we didn't check out. But yeah, there's just a cool insignificant ones. Okay. Right, anyways, jump into the second star... So this is the twin star. Okay, right. It's also got a ring around it. And a brown dwarf by the looks of things. A very, very close brown dwarf. Um, okay, or a sub-brown dwarf that currently spends its time eating the leftover formation particles. Okay. Uh, I burn us. Basically Venus. Okay. So is that... Uh, there it is. So similar to Venus... It's very hot here, 300 degrees, not as hot as Venus, but very, very similar properties. So there it is there. Okay. Uh, I overt another life planet. So that's this blue one. Okay. So a nice, uh, more ocean-heavy world here. So let's just, uh, all the way... Where, where are the... Where's the life likelihood? Uh, 91 and 43. Okay, pretty good. Cool. Uh, next time it's just dot dot dots. Let's see what's going on here. So that's this object. So what? Why is this one just got a dot dot dot? What's going on here? Um, doesn't seem like there's anything really. Okay. Uh, Canva. It rotates on its side like Uranus and has beautiful rings. All right. I mean, for how many rings there are in here, I'm quite surprised the simulations run as well as it has really. Um, so here it is there. So that's tilted on its side like Uranus. Cool. It's also got some moons to go with it as well. All pretty basic ones. Okay, cool. But yeah, there we go. Um, and that is everything for this system as well. So that was submitted by the user Greenish Green. Okay, cool. Right, moving on. Next up, we have got a system from Kingdom Mapping. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Can I open this? So it's a Sar Sarola system. Okay, let's see what we got here. Another workshop simulation. So I have to go again and open it up. But while we do that, what's the chat saying as well? Uh, anything going on? Uh, uh, some good old Uranus jokes I see going on, alright. Okay. Well, 27 people watching at once. Thank you very much to everyone for tuning in. I hope you're enjoying, uh, hope you're enjoying everything so far. And yeah, if you've got any questions you want to ask, let me know. I'll happily, uh, happily answer some questions if you have any. Right, anyways, um, let's search the next system up. So let's go back. Okay, let's uh, get rid of all that. Paste in there, because this is the next system. Uh, there it is. So, Pacific Bull Mapping. Um, wait, I've already got this one added? Hang on. Um, the Salo Last System. Have I done this one before? I've already got it. You are subscribed to this item? I think I've done this. They must have posted it twice. Um, let's see here. Where is it? Oh, no, I have done this before, because it's already here. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Do I remember this? We'll have a quick look through it, but if I've already done it, I've already done it, so... I sell that open up, see what we got. Hello, Neptunian guy. Hello. How you doing? I think you skipped system. No, no, I'm in the chat here. I mean, yeah, this was the next system down from Greenish Green. This was the one posted on the 8th of December, 2021. Uh, this was the next one down. Uh, is it going to load? Okay. Whoa. Now, let's see. Do I... Oh. 
I want to say I have done this. Let's see here. I just want to see, recognize any of the planets. I'm sure I must, if I've got it saved, I've done it. I'm, I'm pretty sure I have done it. Let's see here. I'm just trying to see if I can recognize any sort of moons or anything or stars. I remember a system with a lot of stars. Yeah, I remember this one. This one had loads and loads of stars. In it. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, we did this. Okay, right. No, we'll skip that then. We have done this one. So they must have posted the same system twice and up, put an updated version. So I must have already done this updated one a while back if they updated it. So, yeah, we, we've done that system. Oh, it looks like some of the guys in the chat say, um, yeah, okay, cool. A uh, Neptunian guy, how did you get into space? Honestly, I can't remember. I, I was probably three or four years old. I mean, I've loved space for as long as I can remember, really. So, honestly, I can't really answer that question. I don't know. I mean, I've just loved it for as long as I know. How I got into it in the first place, I honestly don't know. I, I can't remember that far back. I must have been about four years old, three or four years old, a long time ago. Honestly, cannot remember, unfortunately. <laughs> right, uh, moving on as well. So next up, we got a simulation from the user Hayden. My custom solar system. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what we have got here. All right, making good progress. We're getting through. This is, this is the fifth one we're doing now. Well, we've gone through five because that other one we just skipped. So let's uh, see here. Let's go to there. Oh. So there it is there. Okay. By Nick Gaiman as well. Uh, okay, here we are. So that uh, download. What time is it for you? I'm in America. Um, it's currently coming up to 5 o'clock. Um, 5 p.m. in the UK at the moment. Cool. Right, anyways, uh, let's open this system here. So this is what we've got. So this is from the user Hayden in Discord. So here we go. Uh, my custom system by Magnuson Gaming. This took a few hours to make. This is also my first system as I put on the workshop. Welcome to my custom solar system. Please keep the simulation paused at one hour per second. The orbits are stable, but going fast will mess them up. Yeah. All right. Okay, guys. So we've got a nice, uh, nice, small but sweet system here. Right. So, star itself, obviously pretty, uh, pretty blue, pretty large, and so oh, it's not very massive, but it's larger than the sun. Very, very hot as well. Okay. All right, next up we got Mika. The first planet from the start is like a smaller Mercury, okay? So pretty genetic Mercury. It has a satellite around it as well. Uh, next up we got uh, Penus over here. Uh, it's a second planet. It's a dying planet. The planet had too much CO2 in its atmosphere and the ocean is slowly evaporating. There are still some stragglers on the surface slowly dying out. The planet also has a Mars-like moon. Okay, so pretty hot, um, pretty hot greenhouse effect going on here. So as we can see, that's what it looks like underneath. Pretty exotic colours going on there as well. There you go, okay. And got this object over here as well. So there's the moon, okay. Cool. So that was the Mars like moon. Next up, we got uh, Ermin over here, a planet. Uh, so this is the Earth like world. Human like race. They managed to terraform their second moon. The first moon is too small. So this is the Earth like world in this system. 95 and 59 on the stat sales. You've got a lot of space stations and stuff going around. We've got Moon 1. This is the one that they couldn't colonize. So pretty generic. But the second Moon 2, they could colonize. So here it is here. Cool. And it's looking pretty good, actually. Nice. So I've got 75 and 13 on the stats. Okay. Cool. Nice. Right. Next up. Let's see here. Next up, we've got Mio, a dwarf planet, basically a warmer Pluto. All right, nice. Sarah lives there. Obviously, pretty genetic, self explanatory. Um, Painet is the fourth planet. This world is lifeless and currently a goal for Massians to terraform inhabit. The planet has a moon that has a moon. Okay, cool. So, there it is there. Nice uh, blue colored ocean there. We'll see, um, looking good as well. Stat wise, 91 and 56. Pretty good stats there. Has a moon as well. It says the moon with a moon. Nice. Cool. Right, it says planet. Next up, we've got Dixon, another dwarf planet. So we're taking a bit of a jump here to Dixon uh, with a few moons. The Massians get reams of an unknown element, and it is currently a goal for mining the unknown element. Cool. So there it is there. Obviously, just a few more generic moons in orbit as well. And next up, we got uh, Pluppy, a small gas giant. The planet has a few moons. One of them is an ice moon. Uh, the planet also appears to have caught an asteroid from another system. Ooh, okay, fancy gas giant. Uh, the Marcians are trying to send a probe to get a closer look at it. This planet has a type of photo... Uh, 
synthetic bacteria in its atmosphere making sunbands appear purple. No surface life because it's a gas giant. Okay, and lastly, also if you want to talk about the lonely banana, I've already spotted it. I spotted it as soon as we loaded in the system, actually, but we'll get to that in a minute. So here are its moons, though. Got like a lime green toxic atmosphere on there. I've got another moon here. Pretty frozen up, okay. Captured rogue asteroid as well. Nice. But anyways, moving on to the final object in here. A lonely banana. Chilling on the outer edges of the system. So literally... A tiny banana, probably long ago rotted, but there it is, a hidden banana, 10 centimetres in size, chilling out here. So someone's obviously dropped it out of a spaceship airlock, and there you go, so it's just chilling there. <laughs> Minus 228 degrees, anyone want to eat a banana that cold? There you go, there's a banana for you there. But anyways, that is it for that system, so a nice quick little system there as well. Okay, cool, right, we're making solid progress, we've got through a good load of systems here. So, cool, we've been going for 40 minutes already, wow. That's pretty crazy. Uh, what's the what's the comments saying? Um, da -da. Cool. Uh, what's your age? I'm 21 years old this year at the moment. Um, I'm the user Earthlight Planet in Discord, and you may have skipped my system and Nusto system. Nusto system. Uh, I I've, I've been doing them in order. I haven't seen it. I mean, I'll have a quick look up in the chat, see if I've missed anything, but. Nusto system. Uh, I see one called the Onion Way from um, from you, Earth Flight Planet. If that's your username, I'm the user Earth Flight Planet in Discord. Yeah, I see a I see a system here called the Onion Way. I don't see any other ones from you down in the list though. So interesting. Yeah, I don't I don't see it. Uh, I'm just having a look. Oh, man, there's so many. Uh, I see another system from you as well called the ON82 system. But I don't see one with that name that you've just said there. Unless it's further up and I have missed it. Let's have a look here. Um, see if I can find it. Oh, there's so many. There's, I don't think we're going to get through all these. There's so many. <laughs> oh, my God. But we're still making progress, which is what counts at the end of the day. Crater system, greenish. Gr I really do not see a system with that name anywhere. I mean, I'm going back up into uh, July last year. I don't see any system with that name. Yeah, it's not here. I don't see it, unfortunately. Sorry about that. He's from the UK. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I, d I don't see it. I mean, yeah. Okay, tell me what month it was posted or when. I don't. I honestly don't see it. Um, cool. Anyways, next up we've got a system from the user Brandon Weeks. We'll go ahead and search that up. This one is actually from, um, this is a file actually I just need to download. So let's just go ahead and put that in my game right now. So simulations, uh, where are we? Uh, no, no, I don't want to go there. Uh, video, no. Oh, I've seen, do yeah, the US folder's in documents, that's it. Uh, simulations, done. Okay, cool. All right, so we're getting into that. Right, let's open this up. So open... There it is there, it's the Kai Maria system. This is next up. Okay, right. Oh my god, this has got a lot of stuff. Ho oh, ho! Oh wow, okay. There's a lot of rings in here. Right. Caution, I've not memorized all of the names in the system, so a quick warning, some of them may be wrong in here. Uh, I'll be lucky if I can pronounce them probably. Anyway, it's a star, Chi Maria. This is the star of the Chi Maria system and therefore has all the uh, asteroids, the belts, astro planets, and. Okay, so all the stuff, all a bit of it, okay. Right, so first of the planets. This is the closest planet to the Chi Maria. The planet's surface is solid and the color of the surface is green blue color. How the planet is. Uh, oh, wow, it's got like a big crater on it as well. What's that all about? Look at that. Oh, pretty interesting there. So it's a really, really hot planet as well. Cool looking one though. 137 degrees there. But yeah, very, very strange colours on there. Okay. Next up, we have got Constable over here. Right. So, another world. Uh, the planet is quite big compared to some of the planets here. It is the second planet to Chimera. This planet is a kind of a wasteland but with water. But the water will soon fade away, stripping the planet away of any chance of life it ever had. Okay. Right. Next up we have got uh, Shantia. This planet has three moons, uh, which also makes it the planet with the most moons in the system. Okay, interesting. 
So this one's very, very exotic coloured. A minus 120 degrees here. Uh, it's also quite small compared to other planets. It was actually in a binary orbit with its biggest moon, but a small pull from another planet eventually made uh, the moon a lot smaller and broken off bits, which became... Okay. Interesting. So you can uh, read the bits there as well. Okay. So you can see it. This would have. Uh, this used to be two objects, or one object. Now it's two. Or C actually. So there was three of them. There. Okay. Okay. Next up, we got uh, Terrascar. The planet is the fourth planet and it has one moon. The moon actually would have became object D if it wasn't for the fact that the orbit was weak and the planet being big enough to put it today. The moon still orbits. Okay. So there's that one. Next up, we've got Shinmark over here. This planet is a gold-looking colour, and the fifth planet... This planet used to have a moon, but it's pulled from a strong planet. Destroyed it. All right. Okay. Interesting. Right. Uh, next up, we got Nasir. The planet used to have an orbit more upright before the pull that took Shinmark's moon and came by and shaped it. So, that's this object over here. Pretty weird orbit now. Got a nice sort of atmosphere going on there. Okay. Interesting. First asteroid belt. Unlike the others, this will form into a new planet in millions of years from now. Okay. Uh, Erlanka. Uh, this is the closest gas giant to Chimera and the remains of Shinmark's moon. Eventually formed a new moon which should form closer to Erlanka and so has stolen moon. Okay. So that's this pink one over here. It's a gas giant. Have a quick peek at the moon as well. So, Ponta over here. Cool. So there's that one. Uh, next up we got Hinkara. Oh, no, no, y Yainmara. This is the second gas giant, but one is close to the second asteroid. Okay, so over here. There it is there. So it's all green. Green shaded gas giant there. Looking more blue with the starlight, though. Cool. Doesn't have any moves it could have in the next thousand years. Okay, right. Wistalika and Ristalika. These planets actually orbit each other in orbit. Uh, but these planets use their own orbits, but one day the same pool actually created the third asteroid belt by destroying the rocky planet it got too close to. If this pool also affected the two planets which got close together, they had started to orbit each other. Uh, which has now lost its moon because Ristalika kept affecting the small moon which got too close and got torn to pieces. Okay. I hope you can take that all in because it's quite a lot to take in. Second and third asteroids belt. It's been noticed that there are two and actually a few of thousand years combined. They're also so close together. You can see them there, yeah. Okay, next up we have got Krina. Where is that? Oh, that's Okay, so we also missed this object here as well. So that's one of the ones that was just mentioned. And we've got Hinkara as well. Another gas giant. But anyways, on to uh, so Krina over here. This gas giant lies beyond the third asteroid belt and along with the Wister and Wister it keeps the second and third from forming a new planet. This is also the biggest planet. Okay, so it's the dominant gas giant here. Okay, cool. Nice. It's very, very dark and dim here as well. Okay. Right, so now we're taking another jump. So next up we got uh, Shin... Kaya. This planet lies beyond the fourth and final asteroid belt and it formed along with Hykaria, keeping this from forming into a planet. This planet has one moon, Vasa, as well as it actually used to closer to Chimera. Oh, I'm really struggling to say the names! <laughs> a lot bigger than its own planet. It's originally between the gap of the second and third belts, but almost got destroyed. All of the little pieces formed into the third asteroid belt, but a small bit of planet survived, got knocked off course, and would have flown into space if it wasn't for Shin Kaya catching it. Okay. Right. Oh, it's a lot of reading. Right. Dwarf planets. These were not changed. Oh no, hang on, wait, did I... Uh, oh, Qualia, the cause of the change. Where's that? So it's this red one here. Okay, what is this? Right. Its orbit used to be quite normal um, and lasted thousands of years. Its orbit was about to be flung to severe. Another few thousand years, the void of darkness was a lot closer than Shinmark's. One day, rather than one orbit, it got too close and the moon of Shinmark actually torn off and became part of the rings. This threw the planet a little off balance and started to head towards Nalasa and missed it. Nalasa went unharmed, but its orbit got changed big time and then threw Wistella and Wissa, seeing some of their masses, and turned them into rings. The Vassa, which got dominated by Kolya, the Mount of Vassa, oh, I'm really trying to say these names. Oh my god. Um, the rest are, they today become the moons which orbit alongside the rings, but eventually Shallows has gotten close and extremely will cease to exist. Okay. Whew. Uh, dwarf planets. These were not changed by um, 
Qualia and even though they orbit Chimeria, their orbits are affected by mysterious force stronger. Okay, interesting. So there's a mysterious force out here. Now, what could that be? Shadox. This planet is the biggest in... Ah, is it this thing by any chance? Ah, okay. So this is like a planet nine pulling force. It's the planet biggest in the solar system, but so far out, the light is so dim you can't see it. This planet is also a gas giant with a purple color. The planet affects the orbits of the dwarf planets, even though it won't get close if it ever had the orbit to go into the inner solar system, it would be chaos. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Oh, this also the reason why my grammar spent is bad is because I'm very tired writing this at midnight. Okay, cool, but there we are. So Shadox, this is like a hidden planet nine object at the edge of the system, manipulating the orbits. So pretty cool. I quite like the way it looks actually. I may actually get a copy of that one. That one does look cool. So there it is. Cool. So there we go. So that's the Kwai Maria system. I really hope I'm saying this right. I mean, I've probably butchered about every name possible in here. But yeah, there's that one done. So moving on next. Uh, let's see here. Oh, where are we? Um, so we've done that. Okay, next up we got um, from the user Zeonot. I put a lot of work into this. Hope you like it. It's called the Ostas system. Okay, so this is another workshop sim. So let's go ahead and open this up. All right, okay. And there we are. I need to look at the chat as well. I haven't looked at it in a while. Yeah, I'm so sorry, guys. I can't keep up with the chat and do all the reading at the same time. <laughs> I mean, there's so much going on. What does the chat say? Uh, anything? Uh... You did miss mine. It was posted under the credit system on November 28th. How did I miss it? Okay, we'll have to... Hang on. We'll, we'll look back at that, actually. Hang on. Where are we? So... Oh, they sent me something. What's this? Okay, oh, they okay, they sent me something. Okay, right, so that was an Earth flight planet. Okay, so let me do it. So, what was it November the 28th? Okay, let's find that. We'll quickly go. If we missed it, we'll get it done. So, November the 28th, where are we? Where is it? So, what's it? Uh, the Kratos system. Where is it? Uh, November, November, where are we? Oh, there it is. Crater system. Earth like planet. There's a Nasto system. I've got my. um... I, I must have done it because I've got the. Oh, no. Okay. No, I see why. No, no. I have done it. I filmed that for episode 101. That's been done. That has been done. So, yeah, don't worry about that. That's been done. So, I actually filmed it earlier today, that one. So, yeah, I have done that one. So, don't worry about that. All right, cool. Anyways. Oh, it looks like someone's mowing their grass outside. Hang on, let me close the window quick, guys. Just bear with me. Bit of sound, not too much sound. There we go, that's better. Right, where are we? But yeah, don't worry about that. That system has been done. That's why I've put my little Neptune emoji next to it, the little Neptune emote. So whenever I put that next to a simulation, that means I have done it. So yeah, that was that's already been done and filmed. So yeah, don't worry about that. Cool. Right, anyways, where were we? So... No, I've lost where I was now. Um, where are we hanging? Uh, what are we doing? Okay, I've, I've completely lost where I was. Oh, okay, here we are. No, here we are. So we were play. We were doing the Ostas system. So let's go ahead and actually open that. So um, oh, stop! No, stop! Go back. Let's delete all that and paste that in there. Right, here we are. So, Ostas system. Here it is. I right, see what we got. Right, uh, where are we? Let's let that download. Um, okay, so this is called the... So, this is from the user Zio Not in Discord. So, a massive thank you to them for sending this in. Right, okay. Well, a lot of people put emojis on the system I just did. <laughs> What's that one? Uh, I don't know what you mean, Natural Twilight. I see you messaging me. Under the Kratos system, remember the one below. I don't understand what you mean. Uh, I'm just looking through the systems. Yeah, I've, I have done them. I've done the one underneath the crater system. I have done that. I, I filmed it earlier. Um, anyway, so moving on. So we've got the Ostas system. Let's get cracking with this. So here we go. Cool. I hope you like it. That was the wrong one. Wrong one? What do you mean the wrong one? I don't know what to put here, so enjoy. Okay, so we can fly through this one nicely. All right, what have we got? Uh, da -da -da. Okay. Uh, so we can go through it at our own leisure. There's no reading, no reading, so we can take a break. So here is the star itself, 1.56 suns. So we can go back to the classic way of doing these before they added the little reading bit, so just like I used to do these episodes. So, first of the planets. 
So uh, Lilac Aka over here. So a nice earth like world, 0 0.388 degrees, so very pretty cold. Uh, 89.5 on the similarity, 55 or 6 on the life likelihood, okay. Got some moons as well to boot with it as well. Cool. Nice. Uh, thank you for clarifying that. I thought you were going to do the last system. Yeah, it's all done. Don't worry about it. Yeah, uh, I filmed it this morning for that for that system, I missed. So that's, that's done for episode 101. So I actually filmed episode... Uh, oh, no, 201, I should say. Not 100. 201, that's all been done. So there we are. That was one of the videos I filmed earlier. So I always film my videos at the weekend because I can't film them in the week because I'm at work. So I don't want to film it after a long day's work. So I just do all my video making at the weekend now. So if there's ever an update for Universe Sandbox, I can't really do a video on it till the weekend, unfortunately. But um, yeah, anyways, next planet out. So we can see a very frozen world, as we can see here. Got some moons to go with it as well. Cool. And a lot of moons. So we can see loads and loads of moons. So there's all of those guys. Doesn't look like there's anything really significant there. Okay. Got a bit of an asteroid belt going on as well. We've got objects all over the place here. Uh, next of the significant objects appears to be over here. Whoa, what has happened? What is that all about? Look at all that material. Right, so, oh, it's a lot of, lot of material. It's like something's been blown up here. So another gas giant. So what have we got? Any uh, interesting... Uh... Okay. So it looks like we just got a bunch of minor objects here. I don't think they're anything too significant. But yeah, that gas giant's got a lot of weird debris around it. Uh, on to the next... Uh... So we've done lust yet. Yeah, okay. I'm just trying to spot any more significant objects. There's a lot of asteroid. Loads and loads of asteroid objects here. Comets, asteroids, whatever you want to call them. Um, oh, there's loads. There's any, where's the next planet? I'm trying to locate it. I mean, there is a lot there. I mean, I, I want to say that's everything. Let's just have a quick look. See if we, as long as we've visited all the planets. Okay, interesting. Neptune, I messaged you the right system. Hang on, wait. There's a replacement. Let's see what we got. Uh... Where are we? Uh, that was the wrong workshop sim. So okay, okay, we'll go to the correct one then. Hang on. Ostas system, but it has the same. It has the same name. I think that this is the one I downloaded. I've, I have the. Uh, I have the page up here. Uh, I think this. I mean, we'll go. We'll just go into the workshop again. But I think this was the one I downloaded. Yeah, we can see there wasn't any. Well, we we did all the objects. Uh, browse. Anyway, let's have a quick look. So let's go back. Oh, there's, there's two. Is it this one then? Ostas system. I'm guessing it's that one. Uh, it's a picture of a Saturn on it. Okay, so this. Okay, yeah, I think I think that's it then. Okay, I think we have found the correct one. So it's this one. Okay, cool. Right. So let's download. So it's got the same name. Oh, ho, ho. right. Cool. Cool. Right, okay. So this is the correct simulation for this one. So it's like this is the updated one. Right, let's see what we got. Oh, it looks a lot more fancy already. Okay, right. Oh, it's a complete rework. That's not similar at all to the one we just did. So this is a, a whole different system by and by the same name. So the Ossa system. It's a system that's pretty early in its life, but also a little old. The star of the system used to be a brown dwarf. Um, and used to be way cooler, but out of nowhere, a giant shoe of mass going into the brand of causing it to grow. It then turned into a star and rose to two of the planets. All parts of this is made by me. Also, find the secret. Ooh, okay. Secrets. Is there a hidden secret somewhere? Ah, oh, I see something here. What's that? We'll check that out later, but there is a secret. What is that? You can see in the background, the yellow background. What is that? There's something there. Okay, we'll check that out, though. Okay, so on to the... Uh, Right, so red dwarf with low mass compared to sun. It's also pretty early in this life. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So we found the secret. So we'll check that out. Okay. Cool. Right. So we've got a fragment here. Uh, we've got juice here. So that's a well-being obviously torn to shreds. So it used to be a brown dwarf, this object. But now it is a red dwarf. So it's going to roast some of these objects. And then we've got uh, lilas over here. The planet used to be colonized, but also failed to save the planet. They tried to install the giant shield against the planet. They failed. So you can see a very barren, burnt world now there. Okay. Cool. Right. Taking a jump out. 
We've got juice. Oh, yeah, we've done juice. Juice usually we have to wear beautiful oceans, beautiful skies, where there's beautiful cities. And the species that used to live on it tried to move the entire planet away from the star, and they failed. Okay. Right, we've done uh, Lilas. Also used to be colonized. They failed to save the planet. Okay. Right. Julas. Or Julia's, I should say. Right. So as we can see here, Julia's. An unknown core that was inside of an unknown planet. Little was known about this one. It also captured asteroids, minor moon. Further study is recommended. Naptunun over there. What's that? I'll have to check that out in a minute. Next up, we got e -Vians, A very desert-wide planet with a massive sandstorm thrown across the surface. So that's this one here. It also may have some plant life on it, maybe some aliens. We don't know yet. Further study is recommended. So another, it's like a Mars-like world. Dusty, deserty, 35 degrees, like a hot version of Mars there then. Okay, pretty cool. Off this system, I'm going to sleep. Cyrus plays out. Have a good night, my friend. Okay, cool. Right. So check that one out. Uh, Lisa's Haven, or Heaven. Well, it says Haven here, but in the game it says Heaven. Okay, so, uh, the main homeworld of the Berksins. This planet has a beautiful pink, oh, that does look good, actually. Uh, a beautiful pink skies, clouds, purple vegetation. Some cities on the planet float, others underground, and uh, some normal old surface cities. Also has one major moon and one minor moon. Okay, let's have a little look at this guy underneath, so... Atmosphere off, clouds off. Well, the clouds are beautiful. Look at the clouds. They look good. Nice. Says that. And it also has one moon here. It's got some very exotic city lights going on there. We can see some... Uh... Oh, yeah. They look good. Cool. So that's Pap. The major moon of Lisa's Heaven has surface cities and underground cities. It's flock here to get rich, have a family and make a living. There are many rare materials on this moon like Rexium, uh, Vinems and Polites. Uh, another moon of Lisa's Heaven... It's got place got mined a ton. It's now pretty small. Okay, so that's uh, just the mining asteroid effectively now. Okay, there's also a ring system here. Next up, we got Duppins, the closest gas giant to the sun, a planet full of different gas. Oh, that's a pretty exotic color. Okay, very very exotic color. Um, closest gas to the sun. It's also full of different gases. Planet has alien creatures that float on the air, sac, fly on wings, and glide on wings in the air sacs. Has three major moons. Okay, cool. So first of the moons, so that's Ditus over here. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So a hat will moon around up and a very nice vacation spot. One of the main transport hubs for the Berksons as well. Okay, so it's very close to the gas china. Uh, we also have Follock over here. A moon of Duppins. The moon is pretty boring, a few materials that are not rare though. It's colonized for making ships. Uh, we've done Ditas, and then lastly we've got Nust, another Hatable moon of Duppens. Very uh, could could oh, does he mean cold? Very cold, I think he means. Uh, you should bring a jacket. The moon has a special reserve for any animals found on other planets or moons. Okay, cool. So there it is. Very very nice. Cool cool cool. Nice. Right. Next up we have got we got Boy. Or bowl, I should say. I thought he said boy. <laughs> so we've got bowl over here. A beautiful blue gas giant. Full of life. This planet was uh, more wing creatures as well as plants that float in the wind. Has floating cities, two uh, minor moons and three major moons. So there it is. Nice set of rings as well. So a quick uh, highlight of the moons. Vop and Dop, the two minor moons. So there's Vop and then there is Dop. <laughs> so there's that one. Um, Nibe. So that's this red one here. The closest moon, the, the Berksons did not like this moon. They did not colonize it. They also did not take the time to study it. So, pretty interesting. Next up, we've got Ace. Uh, the second closest moon, a frozen moon with giant uh, levicons uh, that can take down cities under the ice. The cities uh, on the surface are heavily defended because of this. Interesting. Okay. Pretty interesting color schemes on there as well. City lights to go with it as well. Cool. And next up, we have got Bruno. The furthest major moon from Bowl, also the nicest. The planet has a bunch of plant life as well as animals. Most animals on this planet are friendly, but not uh, not all. This planet also has a nice vacation spot for the Berksins. The moon has another moon of its own, Lucas, a very small asteroid moon. All right, cool. Looking good. Right, next up we have got um, Alter. The second homeworld of the Berksins has a thick layer of ice. Okay, so where's that? So... Is it um 
We call the uh, altar. Where is that? Oh, there it is. It's this purple one. Okay. Cool. Ooh, I like the way this one looks. Oh, okay. Uh, underneath. It's got a lot of ice on it. Okay. Interesting. Uh, it has a thick layer of ice that starts at the equator and continues to the South Pole. The reason it's happened is unknown. The Berkson is still studying on what happened. The planet also has one major moon. Interesting. So, uh, Banty. The moon also has a seemingly random ice shelf around one side of the moon. Further study is recommended. Interesting. So it looks like it's tidy locked almost, the way that one works. Facing the star all the time. But it is a moon though, so that's a bit weird. Um, okay. So next up we have got uh, Puna over here. So there's this one. A dusty world of a giant dust storm. It also has a methane rain. It also pretty cold has two minor moons. Uh, I think I clicked on the wrong thing. No. <laughs> Where is Puna? Over here. How'd I get over there? There we go. That's better. It's got two moons. There it is. Nice. Cool. And then they are there. Okay. So next up, we have got Sumblu. So that's this one here. The third gas giant in the system. If I can actually get to it. There it is. Come on, let me go to it. Come on. Okay. Got a nice set of different colours on it as well. Let's open it up. Okay. So the third giant in the system. It's pretty cold, does not have it does have beautiful bands though, has two major moons. No life on it. So the first moon of some blue very see uh, every bug seems evacuated off this planet because of the redacted or oh, of a redacted luckily everything got off the planet we hope okay so some mysteries that's probably related to the hidden mystery secret in this system that's what it looks like underneath looks pretty green and toxic to me next moon out pisca a moon full of water even has a uh, evidence that can cause it tectonic shifts okay so all ocean interesting all right Next up, we've got Borea, a frozen wasteland. Has some liquid water in the South Pole. No Berksons live here because the planet is currently being scanned for materials. Has one major moon, so obviously very, very chilly. There you go. Cool. So, scanner, and it has a uh, object here. Okay. So, next up, so there's a yeah, discovered by the Berksons. Not much is known about the moon. Okay. Neptune, a brown dwarf has its very own system. Right. It's a brown dwarf. It has its own little system as well. So let's check out the uh, objects. Ditty. This, or the old planet where the Berksons evolved, this planet was at the brink of death due to overpopulations. The Berksons had to throw giant trash balls into orbit of the planet and eventually they had to leave their planet. Ancient ruins are still on the planet today. Okay. Cool. So a pretty brown looking world. You can see there's loads of trash in there. So they've thrown a lot of material out. Okay. So it's also got, uh, oh, one of them actually escaped the planet completely. We've also got Lermin over here. So another world there. And then we've also got Recent over here. Okay, cool. So there's those guys. Right. And that's the end of the description stuff. So, find the secret. So we already spotted it. There's a mysterious dark object in the outskirts. See if we can locate it. We know it exists. We saw it earlier. There's a lot of fragments out here as well. What's that all about? So it's just trying to spot where that mysterious... So where was that? There was definitely something... There, there it is. So what is this? What is that? <laughs> Whoa. It's got... What is that? Okay, there's some weird trail thing behind it. What? What is... You see that? There's like a little... Oh, it's a name. Okay, it's an underscore. What is... What is that? <laughs> So this is the secret. Uh, we'll go to view. We'll go to uh, flashlight. <laughs> Best vids. Oh, that's cool. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you enjoy. Best vids. I think that says. Best videos. Hey, look at that. That's cool. Very nice. That's cool. What do you guys think of that? What planet do you like other than Neptune? I've always, I've always had a soft spot for Mars. I do find Uranus quite interesting as well, with its tilted side and it's very weird weather. One minute it's unactive, the next minute it's speedy. So, yeah, I'd say Mars and Uranus. 
Um, I'd probably put them as my other two cool planets. Um, okay, cool. But yeah, best vids. That's cool. I like that. Thank you very much. That's really cool. <laughs> very, very nice indeed. That's really cool. Right, anyways, moving on. We're 69 minutes in as well, Natural Twilight just said, so oh, we made good progress. Very, very good progress here. I mean, we'll probably go for another 50 odd minutes. I mean, I've got things I need to do, so I can't go for too long, but we'll try and get as many done as possible. Um, right, next up, we have got a system from the user Aquir, finally unable to post this, the Kepler 973 system. So this was posted just at the end of December last year. So we've almost got into the systems posted this year. That's um, that's uh, pretty cool. <laughs> it's taken a long while to catch up, but at least we are catching up. So workshop. And this just helps in the long run as well, actually, which is good. So, okay, what have we got? Um, go back. Let's paste the name in. Cool. Whoa. Okay, so this one is the 937 system. So we need this one here. It's very pink. Let's see what that's all about. Okay. Let's let it download. If you made your own planet, what would the name be? Pascal. I've had I've made it into my custom simulations in the past. Oh wait, yeah, that's a cool one. I like that one. You do have the best vids. Well I'm glad you I'm glad you enjoy Space Animator. I hope to uh yeah. I hope you I hope you keep enjoying them, my friend. Right, anyways, next up we have got this system here. Right. Come on, game, what have we got? Whoa! Okay. Cool. Oh, very dark here. The Kepler 937 system. A system of 13 planets orbiting a sun like star of 8 Hattable, 8 Hattable Rocky Worlds, and 5 large gas giants. Recommended simulation setup. Keep pause. The orbits are really unstable. I kind of want to press play then. Realistic lighting and colours. This took too much hard work to make. Made by the Duality Aqua Animates and Silver Ball YT. Okay, there you go. Cool. Nice, right, whoa. So these look like they are all Earth like worlds, these green and blue trails. Earth 2.0. Can I go on realistic mode? I, I do like realistic, I have to say. Uh, where are you? There, that's better. So realistic. Cool. So first of the Earth like world. So we'll have a look at the stats, see who is the ultimate Earth like world. 98.7 and 81.3. So we've already got some high stats going on there. It also has one moon, Luna 2.0. So Earth 2.0 and Luna 2.0. Cool. So they are those guys. Right. So next object out, we have got uh, Aquatica over here. So this one has got 98 and 77, so very, very high stats as well. It looks to be an all-ocean world, as we can see here. Cool. Uh, Neptunian guy, the thumbnail was glitched. Yeah, I'm guessing I'm guessing that's it. Yeah. The light was all pinked out. <laughs> that was weird. Um, it also has a moon. Cool. Right, next up we've got a green one, Aquir over here. It's another Earth-like world. It's colder here though, so there's no way this one's going to have as good stats. Yeah, 83 and 59. And it also has one moon as well. Cool. But yeah, that's all frozen up. Okay. Yeah, this system will really break as soon as you press play. I can tell that from a mile off. These orbits are so close together. Nervilla over here. So another Earth-like world. Got an eclipse going on at the moment as well. Stat-wise, 95 and 65. So good Earth similarity. life like code is a little lower as well. Has a moon to go. So they all have their own little individual moon as well. Cool. All right, next up. So we have a blue trail here. Got this one. So another, uh, obviously, Earth-like world. So here it is. Another eclipse going on as well. Cool. Then it's stats, 95 and 65. Or 94 and 65. Cool. Uh, where are we? Uh, so we've also got labels. So we've also got this one. So this is a another ocean heavy world. 16 degrees here. Nice uh, archipelago looking design. 93 and 69. So decent stats again. Also got an eclipse going on. So it's all been set up nicely for visuals. That's cool. Uh, we've got this one as well. So over Nortis over here. Again, eclipse going on. What's with all the eclipses? 95 and 93, so that's the highest stats so far out of them all. So that is one of the best planets to go to. 20 degrees, pretty good comfortable area there. Hatable zone as well, you can see for comparison. Okay, and then lastly, we have this object here. So this one's at 2.74 degrees. There's no way this is going to have as high stats as the last one. 95 and 74, okay, still pretty decent though, okay. Cool. And then it also has a moon as well. Okay, cool, so now we're heading to the gas giants. So taking a jump out. So Hydria over here. So we've got a Uranus-like object at first glance. Cool. 
If you look carefully, you can actually maybe be able to spot some of them in the distance. Oh no, you can't actually. Where are we? Uh, yeah, we are on realistic. Go to uh, surface illumination. Oh, you can see him if you turn surface illumination on. Look. Oh, you can still see that uh, next. Oh, that's a moon actually. Never mind. <laughs> I thought that was another planet. So we have this moon as well. Cool. Very, very nice. Next up, we have got No Valley over here. So a more orange gas giant. Cool. Pretty cool. Okay. Uh, let's see. It's really annoying when I try to move moons out of the game glitches their orbits. Okay. Interesting. These systems are score 10. Oh, that's pretty cool. Nice. Very, very nice indeed. Right, anyways. Uh, moving on. Um, we got the green one as well. Ju Jewelry. Cool. Also got some moons to go over it as well. So there they all are there. Oh. Cool. Devilna over here. So that's also got some uh, asteroids, moons going on as well. Nice. Very, very nice indeed. And then lastly, Tovapash. It's a deep Neptune blue colour. And I'll see a bunch of moons to go with him as well. Right, so there we are. But obviously the one thing I wanted to do here is I want to see this system go chaotic mode. So what we're going to do is, those Earth-like planets especially, I'm going to press play. I'm going to speed up. I'm going to go all in. I'm going to see how this unfolds. Come on, let's go faster, game. Come on. Come on. Speed. Speed. Okay. Right, let's see how this plays out. I think there's going to be... Oh, there's already trouble. Straight away there's trouble. Something's broken out. <laughs> right. Oh, oh, there's the gas giants interacting with each other. Yeah, they can't even do one orbit. They're too close to each other. The star isn't strong enough to hold on to them. Look, you can see they're in a binary. That is going to cause some big trouble. <laughs> oh, my God. So let's see how this plays out. I can't run any quicker. So obviously there's all the moons to simulate, so we can't really go any quicker than that. The Earth-like worlds are all right, doing all right, to be honest. I mean, you can see a few of them are wobbling around, but I mean, for the time being, they're behaving. But obviously, a long period of time, they probably would uh, get a little upset with us. So we've only, we've only done 20 years of simulated time, so they're not really too much. What I will do is I'm just going to delete the moons of the outer planets because that's probably what's slowing down the system here. So we're just going to delete these because they have no real effect on how this runs. So let's... Uh, so you can see some moons are having some pretty insane orbits as well. We're just going to go ahead and delete moons because we don't want them just... So we just want the planets, really. They're going to be the things that really cause the problems. So there you go. We've got the orange one. So what's going on with these two? So these two have just broken apart. And they had their own moons getting involved as well. But let's just go ahead and delete all of these damn moons. And then uh, this one as well. The, I'll leave the Earth-like ones, but yeah, we'll just get rid of the gas moons because they got the more moons in there. Okay. And then lastly, we got this one over here. And then when we press play, it should be able to run quicker. So let's get rid of that. Okay, now let's try. So we should be able to get smoother performance. And we should be able to go quicker. Or can... No, we can't. Okay, interesting. Because we're going to have to delete the Earth-like moons as well then. Let's just go to... There you go. So we've got all the Earth-likes. And here's... The... So we need to delete these moons here. They need to go. So let's just get rid of them. So now it should run quicker. So there we go. So it's only planets. So now we should be able to get some good simulation speed out of this. So slow down a bit. Just something a little more. Uh... There you go. Now we can run it properly. So let's see how this works over a long period of time. So now we're at max speed. You can already see it, the rocky planets having trouble. That is not good. I reckon one of them will be grabbed by the gas giants eventually. You can see the gas giants are having interactions with each other as well. It's all going to fall to chaos very, very shortly. So... This is going to be a pretty insane stuff, I think. So, you can see the inner planets there. Uh, and the gas giants. I think it's still just a matter of time until the gas giants get too close to each other. They'll make a binary again. That will cause more problems. So, we'll see how this uh, quickly runs. I don't want to run too long, though. So, we do want to move on to the next simulation. But let's just see if anything plays out. What I will do is, while that's playing, I will get the next simulation ready. So this is from Natural Twilight, and they're actually in the chat at the moment. So going to get a live sort of checking out the system here. So this is the uh, armor side system. Oh, and when you're done reviewing the system, destroy the system. Oh, okay. You've asked me. Well, that's going to be interesting. Hmm. 
Okay, so we'll get that system ready in the meantime while this is... I can't see the screen at the moment, so I don't know if it's done anything. Oh, okay, I'm back on it now. You can still see there's all bit stuff going on here, but let's watch that as it plays out. Um, and then we'll get this ready in the meantime. Oh, stop doing that. Go back. There we go. Right. Paste that in. From the user Natural Twilight, who is in the chat at the moment. There you go. Okay, so we're getting that ready. So we'll let that just download. So it's downloading. How's this simulation doing? You still see the orbits. It's kind of mean. Yep, there is just crazy. I mean, if you run this for a long enough time, you can. This is just going to be insane. So we're going at max, max speed. I can't go any quicker than that. But there you go. So pretty cool stuff. But yeah, anyways, we're going to move on. Um, let's see what natural twilight has prepared for us here. So, right. Oh, ho, ho. right. What is going on here? Oh, that's pretty big. Right. Oh, this is pretty big. Right, okay. Right. Armour side system. Uh, calm, large, peaceful, and unusual system. But what secret is to hide within its mysterious past? Sit on a tight uh, since you'll be reading through quite a bit for this one. Okay. Right. So, big star itself. When Armour side was born. So, is that this star by any chance? Uh, hey, hey. I want to on the star. There you go. Okay. So, when Armour side is born, um, it and Alma side. Alma side. Oh, I'm sorry. We're in a binary orbit. So, is that. Uh, and that's no, that's Millie. Where's Almaside then? Um, Almaside was older, and it was in its red giant phase. And solar wind from Almaside stripped large portions of its outer layers until it was too light to continue its life cycle. The remaining red dwarf then encountered an extremely powerful solar wind, again generated by Almaside, which stripped major portions of Almaside's body, rendering it a sterile, sad, and betrayed brown dwarf. Since then, Armistide solar wind was moderate and safe. Hundred years later, the uh, betrayal Armistide continues. Captures a red dwarf with a dis dangerously close planet. The name of the star is Millie, and it was closer climb with the star. Zooming out, there lies an orange dwarf, which has most of the planets in the system. Its name Astra, and has 70% the mass of our sun. It has orbited multiple planets, which all have a moon. There's also another planet, but you have to find it yourself. There's another secret in here. We like that. Okay. Right. Cool. Let's see what we have got here. Okay, so, uh, armor side here. So the star itself, obviously very big, scary. Onto the small little Millie star here. There it is. And here is Dr Millie and Drilly. <laughs> so there's Drilly. So that's obviously in big danger there. Right, so now we're taking the jump out. So there should be an orange dwarf for us to check out. So that's Alma side here. Okay, so this was the one that used to be in a binary with the big star, but it lost its mass. It became a brown dwarf. Um, and then it also has one object, it's a, uh, one gas giant planet around it as well. Okay, so very, very cool indeed. Right, where are we heading next? Now we're taking a huge leap out. What is this? Um, so we've got Astra over here. So this is where the main system is around this star, away from the crazy zone of that big star. But you mean the big star is still a pretty big uh, big threat in here. So where, 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 where's the star? Where, where's it gone? Oh, okay, so no, it is pretty... We are pretty far away. You can see it's a huge distance away then. Okay, cool. Uh, let's just look at his stats. How far away are we? So 7,070 years away. Okay, 1,028 AU. Cool. Right, onto the first of the planets. Right. Kepel over here. So first of the planets. It's receiving starlight from behind it, so the blue star's light is reaching here. Okay. Uh, next up we have a green. We've got Lur over here. Nice green gas giant. Hey, what do you think of that? Hey, nice. Um, also got um, Ignorus here. Got a bit of water on it there, but I doubt that'll be very habitable. Uh, next up we have got Murphil here. This is a more uh, earth like world. Very, very green. Let's check its stats. 95 and 79. Pretty good for the situation it's sitting in here with all these objects. We have a, also have an object called Luminous here. So I'm guessing that'll be quite reflective. Sitting near its parent planet. Um, then we have uh, Holly Linda over here. Probably butchering all these names. Apologies for that, as you are in the chat right now. <laughs> you can let me know how I do out of 10 for my pronunciation skills. I'm pretty sure it'll probably be 1, though. Uh, Earth similarity, 98.4. So pretty good stats on that one as well. Nice. Also has uh, moons as well. Obviously just minor moons, but there you go. Cool. Uh, next up, we have got the Barry Center. Okay, so I wonder what that's Barry Center in then. Uh, we've also got um, Calcite over here. So that's uh, obviously an all frozen world. That's a real crystal or rock called calcite as well. I have a piece actually. I, I've been to, I went to some caves and I found a piece of calcite. That's pretty cool. Uh, next up, we have navy over here. 
So that's uh, a nice blue object. And it also has a uh, good old Salby, one of the more common names in the game. So there is that. Okay, cool. Now, there was a secret in this system. Now, I believe it is whatever this is. Zerfu. So it's a rogue planet chilling out here. So I wonder if this is the secret. And it's got fitting us as a moon as well. But I will just check a little further out, just in case there is anything else. Fittiness. I think that's everything. Anything further out? That looks to be it. Okay, cool. Let's just have a look on the list, see if we miss anything. Um, yeah, we've done all these. I think we've done them all. So if we just look here. Zoom in again. So yeah, we checked out. We checked out all these. So I've just seen here. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we, we, we checked them all out. Okay, cool. So I think that was a secret there, that one. Okay, cool. Nice. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so next up, what have we got? That was a cool system as well. Oh, and he said, yeah, once you are done reviewing the system, destroy the system. I do not care how you destroy it. Well, I think the first option is to throw a quasi star in here somewhere. So what we're going to do is, uh, here's the bro here's the orange dwarf. What we're going to do is uh, press play for a start. So there's all those guys. They're just chilling nicely. But he did request we destroy it. So we are going to uh, do some of that big time. We're going to spawn in the quasi star. So there it is. So this object here, I'm going to spawn in there. Oh, dear. Oh, it's very, very glowy. It looks almost green. Why does it look green? This was meant to be yellow. Oh, it is yellow. I don't know. I don't know why the color's weird, but there's Quasi Star, so it's pretty weird. So let's see what chaos this is going to do. Oh, you can already see there's trouble. 700 degrees already. We only just spawned it in. <laughs> it's it's going to be chaos. I mean, 36 degrees. How's this on this? This is we can watch this as it slowly starts to... So this was a world that had a very good Earth similarity stat. But I doubt that's going to last much longer. So let's get his stats. Let's keep an eye on those stats. And see, is that big? Oh, so that's a lot bigger. You can see the other star. There's the orange dwarf, which is a lot closer. And also, if you compare them all, I mean, this is way larger than, yeah, quasi star. A big, big thing. This green's got to go. I do not like Why is it green? I didn't put it as green. Get out. It's like a lime green. This is the first time seeing one of your streams. Yeah, I don't stream often, honestly. I mean, it's quite a rarity. There we go. Let's make it... That's what it should be like. More of a yellowy... I don't know why it was green. There we go. I'll leave it like that. But there you go. Cool. So, quasi star. Big, dead, and dangerous, and me messing. So, let's watch as this planet's uh, temperature goes skyrocket high. So, check its stats. Uh, composition. So, it's, look at the Earth. So look at the stats go down. Oh, my... We're, this is in a few hours as well. It's, it's tearing its moon apart as well, look. Oh, no. But you can see... Oh, dear. Not good. So the quasi-star. The ultimate system destroyer as well. And its moons are being torn to shreds by the... Oh, it's the quasi-star. It's dissolving the moons. That's why. It's Earth similarity stat, though. 47. I mean, if we keep running here, I mean... It's not going to last much longer, is it? I mean, there's not much chance here. Earth similarity, the life likelihood. I mean, how it's still got life likelihood, I do not know. That should be zero by now. But... It's still going down. I mean, it's not going to... Quasi Star is just a beast. <laughs> and it's going to pull the whole system towards it as well. You can see it's, it's going to pull the other... You can see there's trouble down here. Whatever's going on down here as well. But obviously that star is no match for Quasi Star. So it's going to be insane, right? But you can see this whole system here. I mean, Quasi Star will pull the planets away from the star as well, probably. So there's Calcite. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. This is uh, going to be crazy. Let's just go full speed. Let's just see what the Quasi Star can do. I mean, I think we're just going to manually intervene and just bring it closer just to cause trouble. So, there you go. What do you think of that Quasi Star? I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's going to rip everything to shreds. Now we're this close. 1600 degrees. Look at the Quasi Star. Look at that. It's huge. It's bigger than the whole solar system. <laughs> it's mental. 1500 degrees. I mean, it's just going to pull them all in now. I mean,. Nothing to really increase or really spice things up. He said destroy it in any way you can. We're going to blow up this one. So that's gone. That's completely gone. So we've got a supernova in here. We've got a quasi star in here. All at the same time. So that supernova is obviously going to affect this lot as well. If they don't get gotten off by the quasi star. <laughs> so we can see here. I mean, a lot of the planets probably won't even make it to the quasi star. Because they're just being dissolved. So... I mean, where, where's some of the rocky... There's a rocky planet. So let's wait until the supernova to actually reach us. But there you go. <laughs> oh, my God. 
So there you go. The whole system is going to fall. It's going to fall into the quasi. So it's gone. And there's another Nova. And I think the quasi star is going to blow up as well. <laughs> oh, dearie. See, if there's one thing I can do, it's destruction. And that is... That's a disaster. <laughs> it's all gone. It's ruined. There you go. So... You asked me to blow it up. I mean, there you go. So, what do you put? You put, when you're done reviewing the system, destroy the system. So, is that enough destruction? I mean, I think that's a good way. That's a lot. Yeah. That's, uh, there's not much left. Is there? <laughs> Quasi Star's now a black hole somewhere. Wherever that, yeah, yeah. So, Quasi Star's a black hole now. So, oh, it's tiny. Look how small it is. It's only, look at all the size. That massive object is now 43. Point three kilo or forty four point three kilometers after being bigger than the solar system, effectively. So that's completely gone. So supernova destruction. The the orange dwarf smashed inside the Kazi star, had an overload of mass and just gone. <laughs> yeah, what do you think of that? That was uh, that was pretty crazy. But yeah, what do you guys think of that? Is that enough destruction for you? Because um, that was pretty good. <laughs> so there you go. So there. Is that system done? So moving on, um, I think we'll probably do one or two more systems. I mean, we're we're into two thousand. We're into the two. That was the last system. Oh no, no, hang on, no, no. The system we're about to do now is the last system that was uploaded in two thousand twenty-one. So we've finally got the backlog done for two thousand twenty-one. So next up, we have got this a system from the user uh, Jenny Tools. Okay, um, and this is called the Prime Primum system. So let's go ahead and get that done. Right. Oh, stop going back. There, there we go. We wanna... There you go. Cool. Uh, how's the chat saying? So crazy. Yeah, that was uh, that was pretty. That was pretty nuts, wasn't it? <laughs> that was disastrous. Wow. We. Okay. Anyways, right. Next system. So here it is. Get that download down here. So this is some of the user uh, uh, Jenny tools. Okay. Cool. That's pretty cool. So what we'll do is um, just gonna just move some things in the chat here just to clear. Okay, cool. So this is the last system that was uploaded in 2021. So this was uploaded on the 31st of December 2021. So this was the last system uploaded um, of last year. So after this, we're into the 2022 systems. So pretty cool. But we have still got a long way to go to catch up. I mean, there's no way I can get through all this. will take ages. <laughs> there's so many. So, my God. Yeah, there's, there's, unfortunately, there's no way we're getting to the end of these. But at least we have caught up with a lot of... Uh, we've caught up with a lot of systems. We have made good progress. So, anyways, next system here. We'll probably, yeah, we'll probably do one or two more after this, I think. I think that's fair. So, there we go. We have been going for quite a while. I mean, how long has it... We've been streaming for... Coming up to an hour and a half now. Right. Oh, next up, we've got some reading. Oh, that's going to slow us down, unfortunately. Right. So we got the pre premium. Oh, right. So the system here. Uh, a hot more interesting. Okay, so the star itself. Here it is. So a little smaller than the sun in its stats there. Okay. So sun. There you go. Okay. Cool. Right. So a hot more interesting planet. That's uh, planet A. I'm just going to call them A, B, C, D, whatever. So there it is. Hot more interesting planet forced to be in the moon of Prim and D until it was ejected. Okay. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Object B. Water vapor-rich atmosphere filled with multiple kinds of greenhouse gases was thrown out the Hattable Zone when uh, Object uh, G and H switched places. Microbial life still thrives at high elevations, deep underground in vast um, the atmosphere and the poles. Okay, cool. So it's got some moons as well. It's very basic moons there. Uh, object C. Right. Where is Object C? C? Where is C? No, there it is. Oh, that's G. Now, where's C? A, B, where is C? Am I completely blind? Where is object C? C? I mean, we're going to have to... There, there it is. C. Where is it? Oh, it's in a barrier. Oh, no wonder I couldn't see it. Okay, here it is. Right. Okay. So, we've got an Earth-like world. An amazing planet. It is in a binary orbit with object D. Its life is now starting to diversely start in... The Interim Nova Mira, which means a new beginning. Its oceans are rich with bacteria um, that make the oceans appear to be purple. Life forms on the planet are incredibly similar to those on Object D because of the pans permia. However, its oceans are rich with sulfur, so no complex life on D can survive on it. Okay. And then Object D, an incredibly unique planet similar to Object C. It's got city lights, this one. That's cool. 
but much better conditions for life. It has strong volcanism powered by its sheer size and the fact that it's in a binary, a strong magnetic field stronger than the Earth. All of these conditions give the planet a status of super habitable. Okay, let's check its stats, see what they got to say about it. So, 97 and 46, yeah, pretty good stats. And then the other one has 94 and 67, okay. Cool. Right, next up we got planet E. So over here. Cool. Right, let's see what we have got here. Right. A vast planet dominated by huge oceans. Tectonic plates shut down the planet hundreds of millions of years ago. I really like the clouds on that. Um, completely eroding the land away with a few islands left in the south, as you can see. Cool. And it's also got a moon. Nice. So there it is there. Okay, next up we got Object F. Ancient moon of Object C before it was ejected. Where is F? Um, is that it there? E, where is F? Don't know where it is. Can't see it. Uh, F. E. Hey. F. Oh, it's over here. Okay. Cool. There it is. So that's that was an ejected moon. Okay. Next up, we got G. Large, beautiful, blue, purple gas giant. Okay. With amazing rings. It also contains the largest moon in the system, Rhea. Or Rhea. So there it is. Nice gas giant. And we got Rhea over here. Cool. So that's the largest moon. If you look at its stats here. Uh, how large is it? Uh, 0.566 Earths. That's pretty big. 3,607. So comparing it to Ganymede in our system, the largest moon. So let's get a quick direct comparison. It is larger than Ganymede. So definitely large enough for a planet status at that point then. Very cool. Uh, close the menu. Nice. A large moon with subsurface ocean from tidal heating. That's cool. So it's like Europa in a way then. Right. Uh, object H. Large basic gas giant. Contains the most volcanically active body in the solar system. So it's kind of like Io then. Lilat over here. Volcanically active moon with a toxic atmosphere from souls of so far. So far. So cool. There's that one. that is all of the planets so it goes all the way to planet h so now we've got lilac and then idel over here so where's that uh largest co it's a comet okay there it is so there's it there it is there so made of water in it as well so there's idel largest comet glaces basically the planet nine of the system is that over here but there it is yep yeah. cool so Small, it's a rocky world though, but there it is. It's complete darkness. It's just the background lighting's lighting it up. Um, Novus, a strange brown dwarf orbiting. However, it shouldn't be there. Its orbit makes no sense. Uh, hidden brown dwarf, further out than the planet 9. And then PBH, nothing but a sweet old black hole. So there's a hidden black hole out there as well. Mm, don't want to mess with that. Okay, so there's that system done. Cool. So that was the last system of 2000 to anyone. So really, really crazy stuff. Cool. So there's that done. So moving on to the systems posted this year in 2022. So this is from the user Earth-like planet. The Onion Way Open Pause. Okay. So let's see what we have got here. Let's get this up. If they say open pause, we definitely need to run this simulation then. Uh, let's do this. Browse simulations. Go back. Okay, paste that in. Here it is. Okay. The Onion Way. Let's wait for that to uh, load up. Okay, how are we doing in the chat? Everyone doing good? You enjoying it? I mean, yeah, I say it's quite a lot of fun actually having a live audience as well. I have a bit of fun um, with it as well. But yeah, I hope you guys are all doing good. Hope you're enjoying it. And then if you are, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, really, really hope you uh, continue enjoying my stuff. Again, if you've got any questions you want to ask me, then let me know in the comments. I'll try and uh, try and read and answer them all. Right, anyways, the Onion Way. Let's see what we have got. So this is from the user Earthlight Planet. So we'll do one more system after this. So this is the second to last system of this stream. And oh my god, yo! That's huge! What is going on here? The Onion Way is a custom galaxy that is still being worked on. This is mainly for exploration. You can check out the current stars and planets. <laughs> oh my god. And it looks like he's uh, used some of the real life names and changed a few of the letters. So for instance, it says Ragulus instead of Regulus. 
Ka Kepler one, so that would be Kepler Stefferson. Or Stevenson as Stefanson. Elf. Okay, Pollux instead of Pollux. Okay, Spicy instead of Spicer Antares. Okay, interesting. We definitely need to press play on this and it will destabilize everything. If you see any systems that just say barrier sensor, it's a binary system. Yep, yeah, okay. The simulation does not run well on slower older devices. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Naming key, Kepler, based off Kepler. Yeah, okay, so it's pretty obvious. Okay. Every system has a randomly generated interface color. It does not mean anything. Recent changes. Plenty more stars are added. So this is like a mini galaxy. Okay. This is a. Uh... This is pretty crazy stuff. Right, so it's an exploration. So, I mean, the crab pulsars are the crab pulsar. So, I mean, look at this. This is mental. Wow. Studio, uh, enhanced. Aha, <laughs> there you go. Right. Look at that. Now, visiting all of these stars is going to take a long time. So, we will just try and hop over the highlights. I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, look at this. There's so many. Look at all these asteroids. I mean, this is going to take a while to go through. I mean, my God. So we'll try and go to some of the highlights. I mean, if they, if every single star has planets, we are going to be here forever. So I will just try and go over the highlights of what I think looks cool here. So we'll try and get just a highlight of them all. But I mean, there's so many objects in there. I mean, this is this is crazy. And since there's no like proper orbits, I mean, it's quite hard to navigate around here as well. So let's just try and get a lineup of all the objects. I mean, this one's all... I mean, whereabouts is this in this simulation? I mean, this orbits okay that's a little better so we can sort of see what's going on here but that's just one of many and i mean many i mean look at the, look at that there's so many so this is a kind of overkill i mean look at all of this i mean that's absolutely crazy bonkers but i can't really navigate too well because the simulation is a little slow even on my pc so yeah this is this is nuts i mean what do you guys in the chat think should i try and do as many as possible or should i just go over the highlights what do you want me to do here do you want me to because this could take a while, so I'm just thinking, should I try and go through it all, or... I mean, that's not going to be very possible, I have to say, but should I just try and go over the highlights, or should I just skip through it a bit? I mean, I don't really know what you want me, would you want me to... What do you want me to do here, since we've got a live, since we were watching live? What, what should I do? So there's another one of the gas giants. I'm just trying to go over the pretty-looking gas giants, really, so... There's this one, the green one. But, I mean, look, look at all this, there's so many! I mean, this would take literally forever to get through. I mean, there's so many here. And I am running out of time as well, so I just don't want to don't want to take too long with it. But there we go. So there's another gas giant. But this is bonkers. This is absolutely bonkers. It's a black hole over there. What's that all about? Is this like a galactic core or something? I mean, look at Oh, my God. So black hole, cluster. And then you've got a load of stuff. I mean, look at all these. Jeez, that's crazy. Do the whole thing low. Yeah, I don't have time for that. Do the highlights. I mean, yeah, I will just try and highlight all the objects I find significant. So we've got a cluster here. So I'll say that's pretty significant. So that's chilling on the edge of the system. So pretty cool here. I will try and navigate around. We can see light year size, 100 light years. So these are all within 100 light years of each other. So these are dangerously close together. I mean, this is, this is crazy. I mean, I know some of them look close, but I mean, they are within 100 light years. So... I mean, there's 10 light years, so there's each box here is 10 light years, so you can see they're all, these are, these are close. Some of these are really close, so, my man, that's crazy. Sands, I'm guessing this represents the sun. Let's see, what have we got around here? San A, okay, I was thinking this is any like, I wonder if like the earth's hidden in here or something, but it doesn't look like it, so, Okay. Oh, we actually visited this one. We visited the green gas giant, so... Most of the everything is randomly generated to go over the highlights. As many as possible. I mean, yeah, we'll just try and highlight. I mean, you can see there was a lot of random gener... I mean, look, all these gas giants here. These were all randomly generated. All of these ones. I'm just trying to go over the customised ones. So, pretty crazy. Obviously, the stars, there. obviously, they're all... You can't really customise stars, but... They, there's a lot of generic objects in here, but... I mean, there is some highlights. I mean, you can see there's a cool purple one here. I think we visited this one. So this is around a form heart A, so... Nice purple shade there, we'll turn that off. I do want to press play and just see what chaos unfolds. We've got a green one here, that's in orbit of the uh, cluster, one of the stars around the cluster. But yeah, if each of these has stars, I mean, that is a crazy amount of uh, time. I mean, this would take, I mean, look at this. This is absolutely bonkers. <laughs> this is crazy. So we've got this one here as well. Hey, it's like Planet Nine. Cool. Nice. Um, spicy A, serious D <laughs> instead of serious. 
me. It's serious. <laughs> uh, but yeah, randomly generated all those guys. There's some Murphite wells with some water on them. Yeah, there we are. I mean, that, that's mainly, that's probably the bit. I mean, actually, the best way to do this would be chart mode. We can see everything together. So, there's all of the stars. But obviously, we want to see the planets. So, we're going to go down. Down here. Oh, my God. There's so many. Look at all this. I mean, look. This is take forever. Oh, my God. Look at all these. So some of the planets will get a quick line up of them all. I mean, I'll just do it like I do size comparisons. We will just sort of go from one side to the other. So... I mean, most th th these are all randomly generated gas giants here. Stars, randomly generated gas giants. I mean, there's one that's got more bands on it there, but... Okay, there you go. And there's also a big one, Hat 2B. That's obviously a pretty big, uh, almost like a brown dwarf-looking one. So there's all, the, there's all the largest of the planets. We've got to the smaller planets. So all the way down here. So we've got some more customized ones here, but a lot there's a lot of randomly generated objects in here. I mean, look, there's a load of them. We've got some more customized ones here. We've got the green one. Nice shades of blue in there as well. There, also you'll customize. I've seen that shade of blue before. That's definitely from somewhere else. I've seen that. Purple. Loads of randomly generated ones again. Another nice blue one. Got an orangey one there. More randomly generated. But yeah, this is definitely the best way of going through all this system. 100%. So, there we go. I think uh, uh, ON89 is a quasi star. Yeah, we'll have a look at you at its size. Um, but there's all the, those guys, more gas giants, it's gone to the rocky planets, uh, there's a little, small little pulsar star there as well, or white dwarf. On some rockies, that's just a good view of them all there as well. But yeah, this is definitely the best way to run through it all, I mean I don't see any other options, otherwise we will be at GB here for 10 hours doing this simulation. So, there you are, but there's, there's a good line of all of the objects um, right there. So, good. I mean there's still, look how many more of it, look at all this! There you go, there's a good lineup. So we've got everything on screen together and then the black hole's at the very bottom. But what we're going to do is, we're going to see how large the largest star actually is. So, they think it... So is this a quality star? 11.6 AU, or 10.8 AU. So if we were to spawn the quality star in, how large is my quality star compared to this? So, quality... Where are we? Um, damn, okay, now what we'll do is we'll... Just got his head out of it. So the largest star sits here. So there it is. So if we compare it to... First of all, we'll compare it to Stefferson. Or, or UI Scotty. It's one of the largest stars. So there's UI Scotty. Canis Majora. It's obviously two notable big stars. But I think Quasi Star will be about double the size of this. So, yeah. Quasi's a lot bigger. Yeah. Okay. Levit, that's 10.8 AU. I think Quasi Star is around 20 to 30 AU. So it's still a... It still is a large star. Though, don't get me wrong. But, yeah. That's pretty crazy. Wow, that's pretty crazy. You should make a separate video for this. Yeah, I mean, I could do, but I mean, we have gone every through everything. I mean, a lot of it is randomly generated objects, like one of you guys pointed out, though. So, I mean, there you go. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to press play. I'll see, we'll see how fast this even runs. I mean, I doubt it will run. I mean, look, this has so much stuff in it. I doubt this is even runnable. I mean, look, I'm tired. Look, it, it's completely stuck. Uh... Oh, there they go. Oh. Oh, it can run. Oh, let's go. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's not going to run much faster than a few minutes. I mean, yeah, there's no way that's going to... Yeah, look, you can see there's a binaries going on as well. But, I mean, this would... these objects are light years apart. They all take forever to move towards each other in Universe Sandbox time. Because we can't speed it up millions of years. So, there you go. But you can see eventually they will... Uh... Imagine this is just one cluster in an entire galaxy. I mean, actually, what we'll do is... We'll actually spawn in a galaxy and sort of see how this would fit in, in a galaxy. So, we'll use the Milky Way. Uh, Milky Way. But you'd see it, this would kind of fit, sort of, in, so if we'd put it to one of the Milky Way rings, so somewhere, I don't know, uh, somewhere there, there, I guess, there you go. Whoa, let's get all that off for a start. So, inside the grand scheme of things, this is where all these stars would sit. So it's just one little cluster inside an entire galaxy worth of stuff, effectively, is how this would, uh, sit. But you can see in the grand scheme of things, it's very small. Um... So, if we go to uh, realistic, so there you go. So, that would all be hidden inside the galaxy cluster. Inside of the galaxy. So, if you zoom all the way in here, that's where your stars would roughly sit. So, you can see if we head all the way to one of them, all the way down, there you go. So, that's just one of many. It's effectively just a cluster inside a big, big galaxy. So, there you go. So there's, a, there's a scale of the grand scheme of things here. But there you go. So, there's all the stars, and there's your big galaxy. So, pretty cool. Right, anyways, moving on, because, yeah, there's no way we can uh, 
the apologies to the creator of Black Planet, but this one is too big. This one is overkill for, for doing, um, oh, I mean, there's too many objects in there for us to check out. But anyway, it's the last system of today's video. So I think we're coming up to almost two hours now, one hour 49. So yeah, I was targeting a two hour stream to catch up on stuff. So we have got through a lot of stuff. So lastly, we have got a user from the 5th of January. Uh, this is from the user Sky Love Heart Emoji. That's their username. I remind my system from my childhood. Okay. So let's see what we are finishing up on for today. So let's see what we have got here. Okay, I'll put my Neptune emoji on it. Cool. So that brings us into 2022 for simulations now. So that's good. So we've made it with very great catching up. Can you try creating your own galaxy if you haven't already? Ah, oh, I actually have. And actually, side, I will sidetrack quickly just to show you this. It's a very, very old series on my channel. It was called Subscribers Universe. And this is back in the day when I was starting out where you guys would tell me to make planets and I would eventually use those planets in a simulation. So basically, you guys would tell me what you want the planet to be, color-wise, oceans, gas giant, rocky. You'd tell me all that and then I'd actually make it for you. And then I'd put it all in the simulation. So it should still be in here somewhere. I never deleted it. So let, we'll see how it is. It's about two light years in size. This is my biggest ever simulation I've made. It's some, it's some years ago, but yeah, I'll quickly show you it. But yeah, this is how, um, this is my own galaxy simulation I made. And this is the largest thing I've ever made. Maybe I should remake it and just do something. That, look at, yeah, look at this. This is massive. So obviously, I mean, it's kind of similar to the one we just checked out actually, but this is on a galaxy wide scale. I mean, if we look here so far away, this is the largest one. Let's see, we've got the math bros. That's how old this is as well oh and that does actually say neptune guy never mind but if we look here three 2.13 milky ways away from the galactic center in the middle so this scene was massive and you can still find it on my uh, channel just search subscribers universe the playlist you should be able to find it and you see me building this i actually just streamed this this is an old classic one but look at this and this was a galaxy in size i mean if we were compare it to the milky way I mean, these objects were made back in, like, update 22. So, I mean, these are so old, these objects. But if we uh, look here, uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to spawn in. Uh, if we look here and Milky Way. I mean, that's the Milky Way compared to my galaxy. This thing was huge. It's more Andromeda size, to be honest. Look, spawn the Andromeda in there. I mean, that's how big this thing is turn all that off and there you go that literally would fit inside the andromeda all of that so yeah that's my biggest ever system cool anyways there we go how do you fit all that into two light years yes yeah, a lot of it took it took multiple episodes to make that uh let's see i wanted to expect i knew it was big i just want to see your reaction most of it wasn't even worth checking out uh, i mean there was a lot of random ones that does make sense uh neptune your systems are too small neptune your system is too large everyone bruh well it was, it, honestly, navigation-wise, that was a very difficult one to go through. I mean, if I was trying to navigate through every single one of those in order, like, that would be bonkers. I mean, that was, that was crazy. Two light, no, it wasn't two, no, I think I said two light years by accident. It's two, two milky ways in size um, is the correct analysis of it. Yes, bigger, bigger than Andromeda, effectively. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> so... Yeah, it was two. It was basically two light years, or two, two, two Milky Ways across. Was that simulation I just showed you? But anyways, on to the final simulation of today um, to finish up on. So browse all workshop. Go back here. Let's go ahead and uh, do that. And here it is. Cool. Right. Let's see what we have got. So it's downloading down there. So this is from the user uh, Sky Loveheart. Okay. So I remade a system for my childhood. So this is the final one of today's episode. So pretty cool. But we still have a lot of systems to catch up on. But anyways, that's a nice upgrade to where we were. We've made a lot of progress getting through the simulation. So that is good in the long run as well. So cool. So there we go. Right, let's see what we have got. Final system of the day. Let's have a look. The video is frozen. Hang on, let's have a look. Is that is that working? Hang on. Let's see. Is it frozen? Let's have a look. It's OBS playing up. It's showing it on my screen, is it? Oh, no, no, it is working. Now I'm watching it right now. Hello, you are pretty awesome. I will subscribe. Please read this. Well, there you go. I've read it. I hope you enjoy my stuff, my friend. 
Okay, anyways, on to the uh, final system. So, if anyone recognizes this system, then you deserve a gold medal. This is a recreation of a system created in Let's Play of Original Universe Sound. Oh, wow. This is a recreation of a simulation created in Let's Play of the Original Universe Sound by Viking Fuller. The series was a big part of my childhood, and I decided to try and remake it in Universe Sandbox 2. Well, it's just called Universe Sandbox now, remember, but yeah. Not everything here is 100% accurate to the original, but I got as close as I could. I strongly recommend you check out the original videos as well. Well, there you go, guys. Check it out. The system actually runs. It isn't poor, so it's kind of laggy if it runs. So I'm not surprised. It looks like there's a bit of a ring. Oh, my God. Okay. So, what have we got? Final simulation of the day. It's the Halazon 11 system. So, XI. So, that's 11. So, there we are. Okay. First of the planets. We've got Khan over here. So, a nice shade of blue. Looking very nice indeed there. Nice uh, warm Neptune there. And next up we got this one. Vaxava over here. So that's a nice uh, Mercury-like world there. Not as hot as Mercury though. It's also got a moon as well. So there's that one. It was great being here. Great channel. Keep up the good work. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoy it, my friend. Hope you keep enjoying my videos as well. Uh, next up, we've got Sandora over here. So another uh, another rocky well. Got a bit of ocean on it, though. A bit of water. And also got some moons there as well. Have a quick peek at those guys. Keep the menu open, actually. Why not? Uh, zooming out. Uh, we've got this one. So we've got a nice Earth-like world here. Probably the most Earth-like world we've seen so far. We'll have a quick peek at its stats as well. Why not? Okay. 93 and 79, yeah, very high stats there, nice. Has one moon called Sky Pulse as well. And that one is looking pretty weird. Whoa, okay, so it's really hot. Okay, nice. Well, it looks hot. It's got a lot of red colouring on it, nice. Okay, now we're taking a jump out. We've got Byron over here. Right, oh, the way over here. Okay, so we've got a uh, more generic looking gas giant here, as we can see. Tilted on its side like Uranus. Got a nice set of Uranus rings to go with it as well. Got some more moons. Okay. Zooming out. Next up, we have got uh, Takara. Over here. So no, a nice uh, ice giant design on it. Cool. Got a nice set of rings to go with it as well. The simulation's running quite nicely with how many rings are in here. That's pretty good. Um, so there are both of these ones. That's got a Callisto texture, that one. Uh, Peely Gra over here. We've got Zitter. Coco Run. Oh, that's very dark, that one. Uh, Larissa over here. Okay. Then uh, next up, we've got Cerberus 1 or Cerberus I. So this is a dominant gas giant by the looks of it. Big, big uh, world there. It's also in the binary of science. So we've got Cerberus 2. So that's a, a smaller gas giant. And then Cerberus 3 is in a binary. So a nice blue uh, blue uh, Neptune-like world there. That would make quite a nice Planet 9 model as well, actually. That one there. Nice. You also got a Moon of its home as well. Very, very nice. Cool. Uh, what is your second favourite planet? It's probably Mars, I have to say. Definitely is Mars. Okay. Right, next up we've got Talamar here. So this is a uh, another... Oh, it's got some rings on it as well. Very, very nice indeed. Okay. Cool. That's looking good, actually. Right. Okay. Talamar over here. We've got uh, Kunnoth here. Salamari. Uh, Derlus, uh, Vens in there, over here. Okay, cool. Uh, next up, we got Fane over here. Looks like it's the last, uh, last of the planets. And there's one more. So we've got Fane over here. Nice set of rings on it as well. There's another star over there as well, actually. So we've got a few more, a uh, few more moons as well. Gal Storm over here. Cool. So there's a nice uh, purpley atmosphere going on there. Okay, we'll keep viewing them all in the menu at the top here as well. Okay, zooming out. So we got uh, Loyoma over here. Oh, okay, cool. So this one's tilted on its side. Obviously got a lot of moons around it as well. All pretty generic looking moons though, let's be honest. I mean, there they all are. So 
There we are. Okay, cool. Right, now moving on. So we've got another star to check out to finish up on. So it's making a big jump. So Halazon 12 XII. So here it is. Right, okay. So a full other star. It's got a nice ring around it as well, looking cool. So first of the planets around here. So we've got a uh, clouded up Mars light world by the looks of things there. Okay, it's not receiving any light from the other star. So we're too far away. Cool. got a Zabenta over here. Cool. So there's that world. Nice. Uh, Laxus over here. Alrighty. Right, taking the jump out. Okay. Vorotron over here. Vorotron. So another uh, another gas world. Got a lot of moons uh, to go with it as well. All, uh, all pretty generic ones as we can see here. All are okay. Airmont, Gatran over there. Cool. So there's all of those guys. Right, and then the last Akamedon. Hope I'm saying that right, but here it is. All pitch black gas giant. And obviously, uh, it got some moons to go with them as well. So let's have a look at close look at the gas giant here as well. So there it is. Looking good. And yeah, onto the uh, onto the rocky planets. Or lock rocky moons, I should say, around it. So there they all are. Cool. And there we are. So I think that does it for this uh, simulation. Uh, yes. Okay, there we are. So that does it for this simulation and this stream. So pretty, yeah, pretty cool. So what do you guys think of that? I mean, it's, we got through a lot of stuff. We got through a very, very nice load of stuff there. So yeah, guys, what, what do you think of that? Was that a fun stream? I mean, I hope you guys all enjoyed it. I mean, that was quite a lot of fun. I hope you guys, yeah, I hope you guys really, really enjoyed it as well, actually. I mean, that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun indeed. So, yeah, let's, um, let's hope, uh, here's to the future and let's hope we can keep enjoying these all the way to episode 300 now. We're on the road to episode 300. I've already filmed episode, uh, 201. So, yeah, we're already on our, we're already on our way to the big, uh, 300. So, yeah, we've got 99 or 98 more episodes to go, actually. So, yeah, I hope you guys all enjoy I uh, hope you guys all enjoy those episodes, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this stream as well. It's nice to hang out with you guys. Um, yeah, really, really hope you enjoyed it. So yeah, if you did, make sure to hit that like button. Let's even go for 50 likes on today's stream, guys. And yeah, nice to hang out with you all as well. It has been quite a while. And yeah, make sure you guys all have a good rest of your day. Um, and yeah, guys, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. <laughs>